And welcome back to episode three of the IFBB broadcast here with Alex, my co-host and special guest, IFBB pro and former WBFFF pro, Matt, not King, which I said to Alex before, Matt O'Reilly <laughs> from King Bodies Coaching. Matt, welcome. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me on. No worries at all. Do you get that a lot, bro? Do you, do you get called Matt King a lot? I have, I have a few. I'm like, it is O'Reilly. It's surname is O'Reilly, <laughs> but we, we are King Bodies. Emily's the king. And yeah, yeah, I don't know why it just it just rolls off the off the tongue, um, Matt King. But Matt she, tries, she tries that on me all the time. When we get eventually get married, <laughs> she's like does. Matt King. Hey, is, there, is there a ring on the finger or what? There's an, she's engaged. That's about as far as I've got. So, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. so it's going to be Emily. It has to be Matt King. Though. It can't this be Emily. She says, I'm like, can't do that. Can't do can't that. Emily O'Reilly. I'll be just don't. <laughs> My dad will have a heart attack. Um, yeah, I feel I feel you, mate. I back that decision, Matty. Yeah, stick to your digs, big boy. <laughs> um, how you doing, Alex? Are you good? Yeah, good man. I'm still feeding my face. Chilling up there. Running up, running up. Yeah, running a little bit behind schedule today, but Mate, you know, it's you're, good. you're in prep. There's no way you'll wait and have that meal. I, um, Hell no. I went this morning. I went this morning to inspect a new site for the Gym Possible site in Carnegie, and that took longer than I thought. So then my session was pushed back later, and then as I thought, because T had her meals, and we, we were both on the both on the food for fitness train. Maddie, shout out to our. our uh, our guy food for fitness, but um, it, we, we didn't have rice for her, so I thought they'd have rice at the gym. They didn't have rice there, so then I had to fucking wait <laughs> because I didn't want to eat in front of her when she just trained as well. So I had my first meal at eight a.m. and it wasn't until three thirty before I had the next meal. I was like, Ooh, fucking after trained as well, and I've been preparing. Eat now. yourself, the big fella. Yeah. Now I'm getting. Yeah, it's a wonder it's a wonder you didn't bite someone's face off. <laughs> 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 the um every car that fucking delayed us from getting home, I was like, fuck man, get out of the way. But um no, um, I just ate myself as well. But um yeah, look a big shout out to um Food of Fitness, not to give them a plug. I mean they don't spot the show at all, but they look after Maddie and I, so we appreciate that. I've got a lot of my clients into food for fitness now as well. And honestly it's super convenient because they um they do bulk food. So like for anyone who's time poor and honestly, a kilo of chicken's like, you know, 14, 15, 16 bucks, like after, you know, discount. A kilo of cooked, decent tasting, like, you know, honestly, amazing tasting, um, like roast breast chicken. I, I think, honestly, convenient and great value for money. Do you get the um, the meals, Matty, custom to you, or do you just buy bulk and put it together yourself? A lot of them are custom, and a lot of them are, we, when we're in prep, like Em's in prep at the moment, when I was in prep, we'll just get in the packs, like the, the kilo or 500 gram packs of chicken breast and steak, like yourself, and... I was really impressed. Like I've had, a, I've eaten with a few a few meal companies before, but the quality of the steak, it's there every time. Like you know, you get a, some good cuts, and then every now and then you go, ah, oh, this is pretty fatty. It's not um, not as even, or in terms of like quality, but just reheat. I'll be honest. That's that's one of the that's one of the reasons I've sort of like. Um, well, while we're giving shout outs to our meal prep companies, I'm better give a shout out to um, Natasha Fenton. She does an excellent job. Um, <laughs> Hold me foot down. But, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I, I've often just gone, ah, it's fucking too inconsistent to, yeah. to get a meal prep company. That's what I remember, you know, I like, remember Muscle Meals Direct, which I think was Skembri's, um gig back in the, in the day as well. Um, Luke Skembri, I think they were. Um, and there's a few of them that, that, that approached me over the years, obviously, just you know, with prep. And I just never felt comfortable to, to, um, to, I suppose trust them to weigh my food properly and whatever else. And the quality was never like, I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Especially when I'm in prep, I like to really enjoy my food. And yeah, I, I imagine you're, you're like me, man, like given that we're very OC, and oh, Matty, I'd assume you've been, you're the same given that you were Dean now as well, but I'm just fucking anal about like macros. And sometimes I look at some of these meals, I'm like, that is not 200 grams. Yeah. 100%. You know what I mean? Or whatever, you know what I mean? Or that's, that's like 220 grams or 250 yeah, grams. Or that's, too, that's too much for me. When we had one gym, like we had this Colombian um, kitchen, Colombian restaurant down the road, an amazing chef, Chef um, Juan Bebeo, and he was like head chef from like Rockpool and like a number of like, you know, um, really high quality places. He was a great chef, um, Colombian. So they did they did like Colombian chicken breast for us, um, like cryopacked. So they... they um, not, col- they, not, they, not Colombian, not Colombian marching powder. No, not marching powder. <laughs> That was the um, garnish on top, but um, so they did the Colombian like you know tenderloins on the charcoal grill, so really super clean. But like a Colombian, you know, obviously a um, little spice to it. Um, but it was like you know, one time it was 140 grams, next time it was 180 grams. It was just all over the shop. And you, you do it yeah. just in case because that's the bodybuilding. You're like, yeah. oh, I made it the last three times. I'll wait again, just make sure. And then you're like, oh, 20 grams off. That's enough. So to what I did, what I did, it's enough to piss you. 
food with yeah, fitness. Yeah, it fries your brain, eh? Food with fitness, I actually got the, the bulk pack. So like there's two meals a day, which are just in a pack for me, like ready to go. And the rest I sort of weigh out. But I obviously double check, you know, how much pasta is that? And it's fucking 370 grams on the dot. The beef mince is the same. Um, and honestly, the, the, the seal for me was tea. My, obviously, my wife, she is super, super um, picky when it comes to food. And like, if there's, like you said, mate, if there's one gristly bit, if there's one like bit that's like, fuck, what is that? Fucking like it. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I just cramped my hamstring from training. <laughs> fuck. <That is> um, <laughs> if there's one arm um, gristle bit, she won't have it. And she loves the chicken. So for me, that was like the, the final tick of approval. It's halal as well, which obviously, for everyone who doesn't know what halal means, doesn't mean that it you know, supports terrorists and whatever else. It just means that the meat's been treated in a, in a really organic and um, proper way through its upbringing, um, pasture fed, all that sort of stuff. And obviously, killed. Um, in the most humane way they've tried to prove possible as well. So anyway, big tick of approval for me, Food for Fitness. If you guys want to check them out, um, you can use my code, UNDFTD. You can use Manny, do you have a code? Yeah, King Bodies, I think it is. So yeah, as long yeah. as you use one of them, look after yourself, guys. Yeah, look, um, use one of them, get some discount, and um, honestly, save yourself some time because fucking time is money as well. I think at the end of the day, that's that's us. Like, where can I be? Where can I prioritise my time? And it's certainly not in the kitchen. You know, we've done enough of that when we're amateurs trying to juggle yeah, well, I've got I've got clients who who cook you for the whole week and prep and freeze it all. I fucking won't do it. I won't freeze my food for the whole week. Like I'm just over that point. If I, I've done it before, obviously, and I just won't do it. So I prefer to get up each morning, half an hour, forty five minutes earlier, cook my rice, cook my chicken, cook my yeah my, my lamb, whatever else, and then obviously wait out as I go, um throughout the day. So I prep for one day. So having this like fresh, ready to go, it's fucking like super super convenient. And then prep means I can spend, you know, 15 more minutes doing my pose in the morning or my abs. And those are those things when you're in prep where it's like, fuck, go do my cardio. Oh, fuck, I'm late. You know, can I afford to do posing today? I'll do it later on. And then you don't get to it later on. Then, you know, the next day, you're like, fuck, man, I wish I did my posing. Um, and Absolutely, man. That- that's, that's one of the big things, especially like given that we're all in, in our own business, you know, each and every day, like you have to look at billing out every fucking minute of the day. Mm. And often like, you know, I'll hear people complain and I've thought the same thing. You'll, you'll look at how much it costs to get one of these meal prep companies. Let, let's say it's four or $500 a week. I don't know what you guys spend on a normal food food uh, shop anyway. Fucking cost me that near anyway. Yeah. But it's like, okay, well, that cost me four or $500, but that's time that I don't have to spend in the kitchen cooking and preparing my own shit. Like what, wh- how much more productive could I be with those extra? Like that could that could equate to, Four five hours a week. Do you know what I mean? So like, you could be far oh, more um, lion leg curls in Alex. What's that? Sorry, probably four five hours in more of lion leg curls. Get those hammies popping. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like, if if I if I actually forked out and paid food for fitness, perhaps I might actually have a decent series of hamstrings. Code, code undefeated. <laughs> code undefeated. Fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's true, man. It's where, it's where you prioritize that time, whether it's making money work, taking on a couple extra clients, or whether it's prioritizing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, spending time with family, whatever it is. Yeah, I used to be like the one where, like, anyone who would move house, they'd call us. Wanking. Because they, they knew what about like, wanking? Wan- I feel I find I find wanking is a very, very important to- piece of time that you have to set. Well, Alex, it, Alex, it's, Alex, it needs Alex, to be fit into your schedule. Alex, there, is multiple, it, it may, there are multiple studies that show. Wanking causes small hamstrings. I would stop it immediately. <laughs> move on. Leave it alone. Save it. Save it. Save the spine. <laughs> but um, but look, everyone would call me when they were moving house because I would be the one who'd you know come over, spend all fucking day moving and like cleaning and, and doing all that shit. Now I'm like fucking move, air tasker. I can save time. Like you know, yeah, I'll pay right. someone to do it because I want to. You know, my time's just like well, if I have spare time. I want to spend it with the kids and or fucking, you know, just do shit that like, I'm either being productive in the business or I'm being a good father or slightly average husband, you know, <laughs> Any, right. either way that I can sort of save, save time. Um, obviously as you get busier and busier and um, you know, ultimately I think that there's a time in your life when you want to take more time to do that sort of stuff. Like, you know, guarding and then slow down and whatever else. But like right now in my prime, I'm like, well, how much can I fucking fit in the day? Yeah. And that's sort of like where my mindset's at now. Um, so anything we can do to shave some, yeah, some hours, I mean, that's fucking more than worth more than money, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, totally but agree. Um, let's stop talking about food to fitness. Uh, we we'll have to get Carlos fucking. Yeah, <laughs> Carlos. Shout out to Carlos, the man. 
Um, yeah, so I'm, maybe, I'm, I'm, um, getting, I'm getting straight in those DMs after I get off this fucking uh, this podcast. Better, better <laughs> so hey, um, I'm, I'm really happy to, to have you on. Uh, one, obviously, look, we're mid season A 2024 for the IFBB Pro League, and obviously, at IFBB Broadcast, we really want to support the Aussie amateurs coming up through the IFBB Pro League and what they're doing. Yourself, you turned pro um, last season at the, and you won the Queensland show as well. It's Queensland this weekend. So, I mean, obviously, you're well known within the, you know, physique, I suppose, world, fitness world, being a former WBFF pro. Um, and then, obviously, you know, what you've achieved and your presence online with King Bodies and obviously Emily as your partner. Um, you know, uh, most people know, you know, King Bodies and the story behind that as well. But um, look, if you want to give us maybe for those who have never heard of you before, if there's a couple out there living under a rock, um, you know, who is Matt? You know, what's sort of your, been your, I suppose, your history and background with bodybuilding? When did you start? Um, yeah, and what, 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 you know, what have you done and achieved up until now? Yeah, well, I started bodybuilding late, I guess you would say, for, for in the bodybuilding scene. I started when I was 20. Five, I think I, I started, I was just finished rugby league. So I played higher level rugby league all my life. I was contracted there. I think I was, I was 22. I decided to pull the pin. Well, I didn't decide. My neck decided. I uh, had two discs and a tackle that gave me grief. And then we looked at surgery options. And I was at that point, I wasn't playing NRL at the time. And at that age, the surgeon's like, we can either fuse these discs and you can keep trying to obviously crack the NRL and play in the, what, what they call as a reserve grade, which is Q Cup and continue there with um, my contracts there or just like move on to something else. So I was 20, I think that was literally his words. Like you're 22, man, is it worth it to, it was what I was going to lose in terms of mobility um, from the neck and quality of life at that age. So that was a tough decision at the time. Um, but I look at it now going, I'm glad I made the decision. And then I, it was probably a year later after that, I was like, what the fuck can I do now? I did feel a little bit lost for a while. I was working away and, I was up in Gladstone and there was this, there was these two names, Anne-Marie Les- Lesere. Pretty sure that she'll kill me if I get that wrong. Lesere is, a lot of people get that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Lesere. Everyone knows that, sorry. It's all right. Yeah, Anne-Marie and her partner. And they were like, I'd, I'd hear their names float around. And then they saw me at the gym one time and said, you should be bodybuilding. And I thought at the time it was the most hilarious thing because I was like, man, I've come from a rugby league background. I'm like, I loved being in the gym. I loved Arnie growing up and stuff like that. But the thought of being on stage in what I thought at the time was a G-string, I'm like my mates would, like, I would be the laughing stuff. <laughs> and it just, it, it was, I was in the gym, More there was quite a few people that were into bodybuilding. That's, and, you know, the more you're around that, the more you start to talk about it, the more you, I start to ask questions. Um, I started seeing a lot more progress in the gym um, at that time as well because I wasn't trying to run around and be fit and play football, so seeing weight increasing. And then I remember Anne-Marie going, I think she was the test. She wanted to test me. She's like, just let me see if you can diet, see if you can hack it. Like, you're a big, tough rugby league player. Follow this meal plan and let me get, <laughs> let me help you get really lean. And if you can handle it, you, you'll know you can do a prep. And I do remember I followed it to an absolute T for like, I think it was like eight to ten weeks. And... It was tough. And I was like, just experiencing all the things you do is you get lean, hunger, obviously being tired at work, preparing, still finding the effort to train when you're tired. But what, what were you doing for work at that time? I was, so I'm an electrician by trade. I was working uh, in the oil and gas sector up in Gladstone. That's why I was up there for a big project. Um, yeah, so I completed that. And she's like, obviously, was really happy with how I looked. And she's like, there you go. You can do it. And then she's like, oh, I want to get you in, into the bodybuilding scene, IFBB. Um, or WBFF, and I had no idea what they were. I was like, I don't I have no idea. And she's like, well, I'm, I'm a judge, ex-judge in WBFF. Come have a look at the show. Obviously, I was flying in back to the Gold Coast. There was a show on the Gold Coast. I came and watched it at the time. I was like, and it was like, that was the best thing about WBFF. The shows there at the casino, like for an amateur show, were packed. It was like anywhere up to 2,000 people. So I was like, this, this isn't bad. I could do this. And then it went from there. And then obviously got my pro card first attempt. And then I was just hooked. I was like, I just want to keep seeing progression now. And then, um, what, we what, uh, what category or division was the um, the, the first time you competed in, in WWE? It was m- muscle model, so that was a bigger boy. So it went on look. So if you're pretty much a so you went straight, I didn't realize you went straight to muscle model, man. Yeah, straight. So to you must have been, a, you must have been a fucking like fair size lad, even playing footy, were you? Yeah, I was a back row. So I played block back row, usually on the edge, just because I was quick. So it wasn't rangy back row like they liked at the time. Um, 
but I had speed and that was my thing. So I always had legs, man. I was, I was good at athletics as well. What I lacked yeah. was upper body. So I, if, I yeah. don't know if you ever saw me. That's what everyone used to say. Like, look, at when I started bodybuilding with muscle model, it was like, you're, you've got to get that upper body to match them legs and quads. And that was pretty much all. I did a lot of upper body work to, in the early days and still am to try and try and get that better complete look. But it just went from there and, yeah, it's like muscle model is what they call it. So it's bodybuilding. I guess you, you I guess it'd be more accurate. Old BFF's like, version of bodybuilding. Yeah, class, classic physique because none of the boys, let's be real, are as, as big as the open bodybuilders. Um, and it was strong at that time. It was quite popular. Did a few pro shows, won some pro shows overseas. Tried my luck. Um, I think my first pro show was the World Championships and I was one of the first Aussies to place high in that. From Obviously, I had, didn't have, um, no offence to anyone, but they didn't have a lot of good quality males back then at the time coming from Australia, so. Did you beat Did you beat any, like, decent names in the in Australia even or overseas that you can remember? Or I think, Are you fishing, Mike? Yeah. Oh, I feel like you're... <laughs> I'm just trying to create some controversy here. I, know. I, I love it how, like, bodybuilding worlds of, like, you know, they interact and they cross paths at different stages and whatever else, do you know what I mean? So it's like there's people who, you, who I've run into and they're like, oh, yeah, I did, you know, I won an overall in or a fucking national championship in IFBB, you know, 10 years ago, but now they're doing something completely else or they compete with this guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I love those sort of older memories of like when you cross paths with someone and it's like, you know, obviously careers keep going and whatever else as well. Like, yeah, so. I'm um, not really like Chris Webb. There was like, when I first went for my pro card, it was a decent lineup too. I was for Chris Webb anyway. <laughs> yeah, so Chris Webb, um, he, cause he was decent. He went, a lot of the guys after I won that show, continue to keep trying they got their pro cards all after me after that um because they they'd been tro- they'd had a couple of attempts at it so i come in i was no one i didn't even, <laughs> no one knew i was coming to that show to turn up when i did and did that so i didn't even expect i would have been happy to place in the top five back then i'd pissed, uh, pissed a few people off for the first show <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just and it went from there i had like an instagram following of like 2000 maybe lucky if it was that and then just started catapulting from there just moving like after that show, eight. See, do you, do you know I'm, what I I'm take? Do you know what I take? I'm not doing FMG for a show now. Fuck. Yeah, it uh, it went really well. I was just like, well, do you know what I'm, I'm taking from forward this? Forward you know what I'm forward. taking from this story, boys? You're the fucking asshole that sets this unrealistic idea in all these amateurs' brains that Ten they can just away. walk into the they can just walk into the gym today and in fucking twelve months' time they're going to turn pro. They yeah. need to understand that Matt O'Reilly was already an athlete and probably somewhat a genetic fucking freak. So you are absolutely an, an anomaly. Um, it it there's, doesn't there's really happen that way. There's <laughs> definitely, there's definitely, um, things that Matt obviously has some genetics for bodybuilding because, I mean, to yeah. obviously turn up and like you're an athlete, yes, but then, you know, the, the fibres in your legs, you know, normally from running for 90 minutes a game, like, you know, you can get strong, but obviously not big legs. So you get those fibres that suited um, you know, the size that you were able to achieve from that as well. But like, I'm interested to, to know because a lot of times we can have people who are, you know, great athletes. And like at one gym, we had a lot of footy players there as an example. And I just had this idea that footy players followed a really strict diet and like were like on point with everything as well. But they ate like fucking shit. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. just, it was totally different to what I was expecting. Um, so I'm interested to know your mindset. Obviously, I imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, you, you competed at a high level for rugby, NRL. Um, you experienced a setback, um, which you know, obviously not it, well, it stops that dream because you're, you're pushing the, the dream then as well. But th- that competitive, you know, obviously uh, nature and mindset that you had um, needs to be driven into something. If, if you're anything like like I was, like I, need, I needed like an and because uh, I played AFL growing up and I loved the team environment going on and stuff. But I love the comp- the competitive nature of it. So for me, bodybuilding gave me the opportunity to continue being competitive, but not have to turn up to like, you know, team practice, you know, three times a week. I, I moved around a lot as well with work at, at the time. So I could find a gym anywhere that I went to. Um, I traveled for three weeks at a time in, in country, New South Wales and, and Queensland and South Australia. And, but, but I could obviously compete against myself in the gym and then show up and compete against someone on stage. So what sort of, you know, what attracted you to, I suppose that, that dieting and, and, and lifestyle where you fell into dieting, the first diet you ever really committed to, you found, obviously you did it, you committed to it, it's challenging. But that's where most people, like they fall down. 
Do you know what I mean? And they, they obviously, because they might be good at something, but then when it comes time to, it, it takes a special individual to get given a meal plan and not deviate, you know, because yeah. obviously. I, um, I, I honestly yeah. think Anne Marie played that to a T. Like the way she, I look back on now, the way she approached it, she's very clever and cunning. <laughs> I love her. She was like, she called me out. Like she knew I was from rugby league. Obviously, the people pulled into your there. pulled into your ego a little pulled bit. Into the ego pulled into the ego. Whatever you want. She's like, you think you're tough, big footy player, macho. That's literally a word. <laughs> like I've got this diet. See how see how tough you are. Because she explained it's the hardest thing you do. And I was like, yeah. I was like, fucking give it to me. I'm like, what else I got to look forward to than work yeah. here? Like I'll do it. And it was yeah. it was a eye opener. You know, when you start to crave things and you wanted, like Mike just said, to get hard and I'd like it'd be th- events pop off on the weekend where obviously the boys at work were like, oh, come over, we're doing this, and I'm like, nah, not coming. I even started back then because I'm like, I'm not going off this plan. I had no idea how to track back then, so I'm like, I can't take that there. <laughs> so I just eat my meal, you know, and it went from there. And I saw the changes how quick my body changed, and that was like. The best thing ever because i'd never been that lean obviously um prior to that i was like holy shit so i just fed on that like when you've seen them changes every week and in, in the morning you start to notice it you'd be boys yeah. if you've seen it now. enthusiasm yeah. takes over like you get you look forward to dieting because it's like wow i'm changing and how good yeah. yeah and then were you, were you were you using peds at this point in time Matty? no peds no and that was the other thing yeah. i didn't like, think so i was that's, that's why i asked i i, I I the thing the first time I was introduced to PEDS was coming into that comp for um, WBFF and just the way Emery she was so good at that she was like explained it all was like these are the risks involved and it was like minimal use coming into that show she's like you don't have to do it she's like but I'll be real with you a lot of the guys you compete in have been doing it for a few years so um, just and her words just to hold on to that muscle tissue as I started diet more not being obviously I wasn't as big back then. So that it all went from there, and then I obviously you start hanging around them guys because their body there's people up there, and they're last telling take this, take that, and they're telling me what they're taking. I'm like I'd go to her going, you're giving me nothing. Like if we do it, like why are they taking this much? And she's like, because they're shit. <laughs> that would be a word. She's like you don't need that. And props to Emery, props to Emery for that also. So yeah, like big time. I'd go to a cranky sometimes. Going, they'd laugh at me when I'd uh, say I was just using a bit of test, and they're like. Why, why, why even like imagine that was their words back then obviously not knowing like imagine what you would look like if you took this, this like orals d and all this and i'm like throwing these words like, out like, what, like you i could look like you like yeah <laughs> like they, yeah. they were big the guy you know, you know, like oh a lot of it water retention shit carrying high higher body fat but being so new to it it's i can see how people just like oh wow like how could i like you just be like i need to ta- i need to take everything and now, obviously, you guys as well. Like, I still hear it in the gym, like, guys coming up asking about stacks and going, oh, I'm taking 500 of this and 500 of that. I'm like, man, I like, I don't even take like, – like, 500 mega <laughs> train or something. I'm like, they're never taking that, you know? And the like, funny thing for me is, like, I talk to coaches and, you know, athletes like who they would be like, so this is the weekly introduction <laughs> um, <laughs> to Marvin. But I talk to coaches <laughs> and athletes um, a lot who yeah, – obviously, they're taking stuff and they're like, hey, like, you know, can – you know, can you get me this or can you like you know what, what do you think of this stack or whatever else or what are you on and and these guys like i seriously look at them and say hey do you know what a steroid does like what does it actually do and like none of them can give you an answer like oh makes you big i'm like no no no, no. like what does a steroid actually do like you know because for me what it's like, is yeah. actually what is a steroid yeah like you're, you're sticking this oil inside your body like first of all, you probably you bought it from some you know UG lab, whatever else. But it's like you're, you're you have no idea as to what's actually going on. Like you know, it's just it seems totally. Um, I compete as a natural. I, I, I prepped two years as a natural. I compete as a natural first of all. Um, I always wanted to do uh, steroids um, I, because I just I, I I looked up to like people who be like, yeah, but that's that's the that's the path if it makes sense. But I'm going to give this a go naturally first and see what that's like. Um, and my first real coach to that was Jason Ha. If you guys remember Jason Ha, um, who was yeah, 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 yeah. He, he well, I didn't know that introduction to Peds, and he was really cool about it. He was just, he was just like this never-ending titration up. Yeah, add this in. Now, now we'll add this in. Now we'll add this in. He wasn't abusive at all, but just kept adding things in. Um, and I went from Jason Ha to Milos Sasa, basically. And so Milos was. <laughs> Bit of a <laughs> mad scientist. Tell us about that. <laughs> Milos, Milos was, I mean, is uh, a walking encyclopedia. Like he's one person where you can be like, hey, you know, you know, what's this? And he'll give you the exact fucking like, you know, 
the exact pathway metabolic process that happens inside the body, how it interacts with everything else. And it, honestly, like the guys are the guys are scientists without a without a degree. You know, his whole family is, is doctors and scientists. Um, so he was brought up in that environment, which is obviously where he gets that intelligence from. He just cho- chose to go down the bodybuilding path. But um, that was that was I learned so much. You know, I've learned I've, in in my I suppose history or career so far. I've learned probably the most from uh, Milos Sarsev in terms of like, because he was happy to explain things to me as well when I asked questions and I was always interested to know why, you know, what is a steroid? What am I using? Um, and obviously he would say, this is the, the protocols and they weren't, they weren't like, you know, small, but they weren't, they weren't excessive either apart from the insulin. But, you know, then again, with, with Milos, with insulin, how much, insulin? what's that? However much we ever use of insulin, I never, ever went hypo, like never once. So it was always like done in a very, I suppose, controlled manner. And then, then obviously with Dean, I've learned so much from Dean because Dean's also someone who, if you ask him a question, hey, man, like, I'm, you know, even with my clients, I'm like, hey, I can't get my head around. I'm having this. Um, this is the situation with a client. You know, we can't lose this last amount of body fat or we're having this whatever else. And, yeah, and he'll sit there and actually have the conversation with me and sort of like, you know, um, work our way through it, um, both obviously physiologically and then nutritionally, but then, you know, pharmacology wise as well, who, what are the options? Um, and so Man, I really, what's that? Sorry to cut you off. I think that's just, we, we bring Dean up a lot in this podcast and I think, um, we really should give him an official, um, thank you and props to the fact that he, I know he doesn't just do that with you. He does it with me as well. And I have absolutely no doubt he does it with Maddie. Yeah. And I have no doubt that he does it with every other fucking person on his roster. Um, never, never not only is that, feeling, you know, he'll explain. Nah, bro, not, not, not only is he a wealth of knowledge and not only does he spend like an obscene amount of time on us guys, um, but he does, does that right across the board. And it's so nice to know that like when we hit a roadblock, that there is somebody that we can refer to um, to assist us to, you yeah. know, potentially troubleshoot and Dean's got, bounce ideas off. He's got an amazing reputation now. Every athlete you see get on stage who's like from Flex SS, Code for Dean McKillop, looks great, peeled, but you know, like, hasn't abused, hasn't fucking, like, you know, that on, you know, just totally fatigued and stressed and fucking cortisol and, you know, two fucking shots away from liver failure. Um, on stage because they look healthy as well and you just know it across the board so he's done an amazing job from first of all obviously you know got a great reputation to bring athletes in peeled full um but then you know more to that um do it in a way where they are competitive you know obviously they're winning shows turning pro very competitive but at the same time you know they look healthy and he does have a a big big focus on you know prioritizing health um, as one of the driving factors in, in with every protocol. So I think it's, um, if you shut that down blindly between a bit, um, he does, yeah, I think props to Dean, you know, I'm uh, like I said, Milos and Dean, I've learned the most from um, and continue to learn from on a, on a daily basis. So as you I, I just another, just another thing I want to touch on us, as bro. well. Yeah, that, exactly. But another thing, another thing I want to touch on as well. Alex is that? <laughs> struggling there a little bit. I'm always struggling. There you go. You got me? Yeah. Yep. You're back. Got you now. You got me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. No, another thing that I wanted to touch on was if you have a look at the classes these days and, and the people that are winning in these classes, and then you see who the coaches are, it's more often than not, the coach is somebody that has been... Um, previously worked with Dean or still works with Dean, you know, so it's like he's creating these little clones as well. So it's, it's fucking, it's both funny, but it, it's also cool to see that if it's not Dean's clients winning, like if it's not Dean's clients directly yeah. winning shows, yeah. essentially it is because it's his like little clones that are all of a sudden, you know, they've learned so much from Dean and they're applying this, this, not this knowledge. So it's like, you know, Flex has had such a big positive impact on uh, Australian bodybuilding, especially. Um, yeah, men's, so, men's for sure, across the yeah. board. I, I mean, it's, a, it's just a shame. It's just, it's just a shame that he's a fuckwit. <laughs> we just have to put up with him. But no, it's like as soon as I started with Dean, I was blown away. I'm like, this man just like everything, every question I asked in depth and 
Uh, it didn't matter what it was. It was like top random topics at times we'd get in debates about. <laughs> and he would be like, it, I'd, I'd go to him about something I thought I knew something about that he wouldn't. And then he'd turn around, he knew more about that, way more than I did. And I'm like, how how did you even know that? Like he, just some random shit or way outside of bodybuilding. It's very, very, yeah, very, yeah, very, yeah. very he's, he's, he's definitely very interested in um, learning in, in general. Like, you know, he obviously... Um, yeah, he's you know traveling the world and just becoming more and more and more sort of you know um I think well traveled and well versed with with culture and everything else. So I think that um yeah, you can go to him with anything and have a conversation and he'll generally have you know some some meaningful input on what we're t- you know, on what you want to talk about with him. So have you ever seen him stressed? Um, stressed? No, I've never no. seen him flustered. Never, not once. And I've like I've. I'm, trying I'm to sure think. you have, Alex, as well. Had some arguments with him, being coaches ourselves. Right. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah. and he would always detach emotion out of it and be like, "This is what it is." This to is the point, to that. the point, it's almost annoying. Do you know what I mean? Because no, no. I, like, I, I'm an, I'm an emotional person. Like, I can fucking. No, fire up you're not, Alex. And it, <laughs> I have blasted that poor bastard, and he has just like remained calm. Like any other coach just would have said, you know what? Fuck off. Do you know what I mean? Hit the road, Jack. Go get another go get another coach. But he'll just be like, Okay, so explain that to me. Yeah. Help me understand this. Yeah, you that's know, it's exactly like, right. Tell you me know, what like, makes you think that or feel that way. What do you why would you think that way? And you're like, Fucking hell, I can't even stay angry because I've actually got to try and articulate myself in a And then, um, then he would you know, break it down and and by the time he's broken it down and what you've said, it sounds I'm a annoying. dickhead. <laughs> You're like, oh, and by the end of it, I'm just a dickhead. I'm sorry, Dean. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, obviously, again, I agree that you can go to Dean with you know issue or you know something you're thought of, and obviously, because as, as we have been competing for a long time, we we, we get everyone who's can, been competing and and active in in the field the, the way that we are learns their body and and obviously you know picks up on how we feel and whatever else you know, along that time frame. And obviously we are, when we travel and compete with other pros, we're seeing what they're doing, um, you know, and I'm a big believer in the fact that, you know, obviously there's a amount of science that is important with um, bodybuilding, but there's also a bunch of bro science that doesn't make a lot of sense, but fucking works. And it's yeah. like, sometimes it's, 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 the, it's finding the balance of, of that that makes sense, um, which is, I suppose, like the sweet spot, you know, and it's like a lot of guys overseas, you know, you, you'll talk to like, Doran Yates and like even Jay Cutler and you know even like Chris Aceto when I've talked to him before and um and Neil Hill and these guys they're not they've got nowhere near the amount of like scientific knowledge than what someone like Dean or even Milos has um but you can't argue with their results at the same time because yeah. like hey I tell you I tell you what like before we get too far down that rabbit hole like, because Maddie and I, remember we had a call about this recently. Hey, we just yeah, were having yeah. a bit of a laugh and a bit of a chat on the phone. And, I, man, we, we should just do a, a segment just purely with Dean and all of us fucking bamboozle him with shit because he'll handle it. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll handle it. No worries. But I would love to be able to see, like, the way that he breaks down, like, some of the stuff that we – because all of us have a little bit of bro in us still. Do you know what I mean? And that's what Maddie and I spoke about specifically is there's certain things that we're like, mm, I know I did that a long time ago and it fucking worked. Like, I can't explain why it worked, but it fucking did. Good for me. <laughs> and Dean's like, no, nah, that's just that's just retarded. Like, that's just a stupid idea. We're not going to do that. We're going to do this. And we're like, mm, I sort of still really want to try that though. I'm going to listen to you, but I'm fucking got this in the back of my head. I will, I will definitely would be- message Dean and get him on here to... Um- to listen to yeah. us if I can try and... We had a good it. argument, though, like our, our side of the argument, I should say, um, Alex, about the, it was training at the time. We'll save it for another one because it was. I thought we had really valid points. When it, it goes against a lot of the literature, but a lot of the literature doesn't work. Like the studies aren't done on athletes like ourselves at, our, at the level doing what we're doing, you know, so... It's funny that means at the size, like, you know, at the size as well. At the size, moving the weight that we're moving, you know, those types of things. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think we should probably go into too much detail without Dean being here because, no doubt, he will be able to shut us down. <laughs> That's his yeah. job. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll get Dean yeah, and, and Milos at the same time, and then see <laughs> them two. Bro, um, oh, no, man, a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I cramp in the hamstrings too, bro. I don't know. I'm not quads. 
nowhere else hamstring will go. It'll Alex Carr or something yeah. silly like this. I've, I've, never, I've never had a cramp in my hamstring. <laughs> I just I just I just get him I just get him in my biceps, Mike. Uh, how much? How much? Uh, do you mean pythons, bro? Big pythons. My pythons. Python. 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 Uh, Maddie, just um quickly with, touch back on um on your career, but I'm sitting in a weird angle. And I'm sorry, but my hamstrings are cramping. Um, obviously, being turning pro in WBFF, yes. With, was it a hard decision to to swap over to the IFBB? Was it something that you always wanted to do? Yes. Um, and, and how did that all come about? Yep. When I had the so I did the first. I turned pro as um of WBFF. I don't think it was too much longer turning pro, maybe 12 months down the track. I run, I started to meet Alex, um, Alex Connors, you, and a lot of the boys that were IFBB. And that was like in, we, I'm trained at World Gym Burley. I've been there ever since I turned pro. I've never seen you there, bro. Yeah, that's right. With you as well, bro. So, and I'd see you guys and then you would think, or you'd laugh at it. You'd be like, man, when are you coming to IFBB? <laughs> WBFF dancing around on stage. And when you go overseas, you would start to talk. People would be like, oh, you got a sick physique, especially in America. And like, oh, and you're not NPC. And I was like, what's that? And I'd say WBFF, and they're like, never heard of it. And I'm like, pro, bo- pro bodybuilder? And they're like, yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> so that's right. Yeah, no idea. And they're just like, oh, okay. And it was from there, I was like, oh, I want to be in the IFBB. And then I knew, I just didn't know where I fit. And that was the thing at the time. Anne Marie was like, oh, you could, you could de- get down the classic. And the bigger I started, the more I started to grow. I was like, there's no way. I don't even have the structure for that. So, And then when I got with Dean, he laughed. He's like, what are we doing from here? Now? <laughs> and he's like, please don't say classic. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to be big enough. I'd seem like big Mike Belusi getting around. Hey, hey, hey. I have to put on so much tissue. And he's like, man, he's like, I would, I think it would be disgraceful yeah. to tr- try and make you suck down to that weight. And he's like, if that's what you want to do. But I could see he was like, you've got the structure to be a bodybuilder. You just have, you're going to have to take the time. And back to when you said it before, like, oh, you one of those guys that sets unrealistic expectations for people coming, these youngins coming through thinking they can do it. I'm like, yeah, I might have won my pro card in IPB first attempt, blah, blah, blah. But that was two and a half years that I sat there. I did not compete for knowing that if I tried to get on stage with them, with the boys, I, I just didn't have the, the tissue or the balance. So on a new federation, um so that was where i had to bide my time be like you know I, the upper body had to come up hems needed more hamstring there was a lot of quad from the side which was too dominant so there was um there was that was the work that needed to be but done. you the thing the thing with you man is like you were already a seasoned professional in another league do you know what i mean like it was just a matter of maturing that muscle getting more getting more tissue um as far as like um completing the look development completely. yeah exactly yeah 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 yeah, yeah. To, to be fair i was actually more so referring to the fact that the first time you did the uh, wbff show you turned pro and yeah. i think the first time we did the <laughs> IFBB show you turned pro yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i know but i mean that was fucking expected <laughs> <laughs> i uh, i certainly felt the pressure for that show it'd been such a long time being away from the stage i was a lot bigger and we had a lot going on. I, I look back on it now, and Alex, you said it a few times, like, man, you need to fucking chill. You're putting, you're stressing over dumb shit. And Em would be like, you, I didn't get, I didn't hit the marking condition where I need, where I know I can be and where I need to be. So that was what pissed me off a lot looking back on it. And it was, I like, think there was a lot of stress there, oh, though, man. bro. And I look at it a now going, stress, I just yeah. could have relaxed. I could have put myself in position with work. We had a lot going on with work, which was great. New baby. But it, just all, it all happened at that, that time and he couldn't say no. And I remember saying that to Dean and he's like, man, just at some point, can you move? Can you delegate? Like this is going to, this may yeah. break you at one point because he's like, you could see I was obviously t- fucking stressed. And then yeah, all, having eyes, knowing I had eyes on me, which was, I didn't want to get on stage and be like, oh, I am a pro in another division. Get on and miss the mark. It's going to be fucking embarrassing after. It creates a Definitely, I can see how that would have created a, an extra sort of, I suppose, um, seeing the amount of pressure up in, you know, oh, well, I'm a pro and the expectation is to then obviously get up and look pro, you know, on, on the IFPB stage, even though it's a new federation and whatever else. And um, obviously you guys had a family, um, started a family in that in that process as well through that whole, like, you know, dieting phase. Having a daughter, I've never done a prep with having a, a two-year-old as well. So that was another variable put in play, which obviously I love it, but it can, um, can, can be challenging, especially sleep side of things. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, but also like, you know, feeling sometimes we have to give so much to our training and, and, our, and our, our, I suppose, our routine and structure 
that you know, when they're young, it's like we don't get those years back. I know from from myself, you know, I've got three now, 12, 10 and eight, I think. 12, 10 and eight, 12, 10 and eight. And, um, and even now it's like, I traveled a lot for work as well. So I was away three weeks at a time, back for a week and away three weeks at a time, almost like a FIFO. And when we had the solar company and, you know, I, and then I was bodybuilding as well. So then I was like, even when I was back, I was still at the gym and whatever else. And I, I definitely feel like, you know, there's a point in time where I um, started to really want to spend more time um, with the kids and because we don't get those years back. Um, and so you're just trying to balance all of that. You know, fuck man, it can, it, even though we don't show it, it, it eats up inside. You know what I mean? And obviously we're men sometimes we don't necessarily show our feelings and, and, um, and publicly display what's going on internally because we feel like we've got a soldier on and you know, I'm from a generation where we didn't really show emotion, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so we just get the job done, you know, which, but it's, it's hard, man. Yeah. You know, when we sit down and think about it and then, you know, when we, um, really get in touch with our feelings, it's, it takes a toll. And then obviously we're lean. Um, you know, we're worried about how we look on stage. We're worried about, again, all of this sacrifice, all of what we're doing, it's got to mean something, right? Yeah. And so I feel like sometimes I know back in 2022 when I hopped on stage and I didn't get the result in Thailand, I came back here and felt like I won, but you know, I didn't get the result in the super heavies and obviously Cam went on to get that pro card. It's like as much as it was all like, you know, I felt, you know, oh, maybe I could have won or whatever else, whatever that, whatever I felt like, yeah. Um, the, for me, it was more about, well, fuck, man, like all my time that I've committed to this pursuit has to mean something. You know, it can't be just for second place. Yeah. You know, I can't go home and tell my kids and like, hey, like I didn't win. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. so for me, it's a lot of pressure on yourself just with that, yeah. doesn't and it? Obviously, I know they, they love us anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's internally what we want it to be. Well, I, I spent this time away, but it was worth it because it worth it, yeah. just the while, everything we've done. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely don't envy that additional pressure. I mean, I put, I, I know what it's like to, to put enough pressure on myself as it is, but to have, to, to, to sort of feel, fuck, did you guys just hear that big ding then from my text message? No, oh, good, I'm glad. Um, I, I know how much pressure I put on myself, um, and I don't have those I- I- external or that feeling of external um, pressure. So yeah, I, I, as I said, I, I don't envy the way you guys feel it i mean the pre- i don't think that pressure is truly there as you said like these people love you anyway but i absolutely understand yeah. Look, we, that, we, that we, is we, something we, else that plays into it we put the pressure on ourselves at the same time that's also the people that we we, we fall back on and, and um one thing I've, I've learned over time you know obviously my development where we are in a career in a field where we try and develop our bodies up to be the biggest and the strongest that they can be um, but I'm, I'm always been open through my journey to try and grow mentally as well and progress sort of like, you know, internally how I feel and how I'm able to, um, raise my children. You know, and I, one thing that always stuck with me and as a father is when you raise your children, you're really raising your grandchildren. And that's always stuck with me because like, I think back to like how I was raised and, you know, I try and do everything that I can to be the opposite of what my, you know, my dad was. And, you know, well, obviously a lot of aspects of what, how my, my upbringing was. Um, and it's like, we don't, we don't want to repeat those mistakes. Um, but, but growing up, also, I suppose, growing through as um, a person, we try and lean into the people that, you know, we want to impress the most, um, then lean into them, if that makes sense, and use them as, as a support rather than lean away and, and obviously, you know, just um, um, try and do everything by yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm very fortunate there in my little team, Emily. <laughs> she that whole prep the whole time. I, I exactly what you said, Mike. That other person and then I would be so lifeless in prep because we had to dig deeper than we should have because of stress and output was really high. I had nothing to give through in it. And Em would just see me I'd just be staring. And then I'd be upset because I felt parent guilt. I'm like, I've got nothing to give, you know. I'm like barely here as a partner and a parent to help you at the moment, <laughs> let alone a business owner. Yeah. Uh, and my daughter. And then Em's like, this is so temporary. This is so temporary. She's like, just get through here. This will be forgotten about. It's a period of like 16 weeks. So I just get and, the and, and just and touching I'm oh, sorry, Matt. We're just touching on that because it's also a very valid point. I mean, we see a lot of... Um, people who try and or couples try and prep together, obviously, and fail miserably, you know, and we see a lot of breakups and people can't can't build families traditionally or hold relationships through preps, whatever else. Um, 
and look, obviously Alex and and you, you know you've got Tashin on in your corner now as well, and, and Matt with with Emily. I think that, but because we've seen so much of Matt and Emily um, on social media, because you guys have a great obviously you know presence online, and you help you know, hundreds of thousands of people, I imagine through your coaching and whatever else, angel bodies. But you really have, I suppose, a, a, you give us all a really nice, I suppose, just enough insight into the family life as well, which is really cool. Because obviously, I'm a big believer. I don't flash my kids all over my Instagram because they, you know, I like to remain some privacy. But at the same time, I also like to show a bit of what we, you know, our life because it's like, hey, it's sort of. I hope it inspires people out there that hey, you can balance it. You can have, you know, essentially pursue a, a, a career that's arguably one of the hardest on earth at the highest level and still balance it and have a family and um, and, and not make them suffer because of it as well. So really, obviously, I've seen Matt and Emily over time. So big credit to you guys because you do seem to, um, I imagine it's not all sunshines and rainbows. You know, there's, there's no days for everyone, but, mm. but you guys seem to really support each other. You know, it's similar to how I think that, Anthony and um, Melissa, you know, obviously competing this weekend, they seem to support each other as well. And it's uh, really refreshing to see. But in your dynamic, Matt, yeah. how has that um, changed your relationship? Like, were you both bodybuilders when you met or was it something that you got into? How does that, how did it, so I suppose, did you guys come together? And then what's your tips to anyone out there on how to manage a successful relationship and prep and family? Yeah, that's... Um, Absolutely. I, I just I just wanted to touch on that as well, man. I Personally, I'm I'm interested to hear the response here um, because I've actually had it's funny I've actually actually had a few clients recently request that um, both myself and Tash start to show more of like how we interact on a daily basis and how my goals as a pro bodybuilder um, potentially impact our relationship. Uh, I mean, I am very very thankful that like. I suppose very much like Matt and Emily, we're both in the industry anyway. While Tash isn't uh, an active competitor, um, she's lived this lifestyle anyhow. Um, but I've never gone through an entire prep with Tash previously, and I have been in relationships prior where it has just been a fucking nightmare. Um, and to be honest, it's probably been the beginning of the end for a lot of those relationships. So, yeah, man, I, I would love to hear how you guys have managed to do it for not, not, not just do it, but do it for so long and do it so many times. And now not just do it so well together, but do it so well together with a child and keep progressing, which is, you know, even more yeah, yeah, fucking know. We, um, so we met, uh, in 2017, that was when I won my WBFF pro card. I won my pro card and won her pro card. And then I was doing fly and fly out at the time. She just moved to the gold coast. So a lot of my friends, again, the all oh, ex-footy boys love them to death, that they they love they live a little bit of a different lifestyle to what bodybuilding was. So all supportive of me, um, love them to death for that. But I'd come back on my own R and be like, there's no one to train with. And Em was like PT at the time, doing nursing as well, doing night shifts. So she'd free up that week and we would train together. And to be honest, she was way more, she was a veteran in bodybuilding compared to me. I was the newbie. She was teaching me things. Um, just bigger shoulders than you, bro. Especially, yeah, especially about nutrition. Um, she trained. Hey, hey. Like, I, trained like I know that animal. feeling too, bro. It touches the same. <laughs> yeah, trained like an animal too. Like, obviously, I had not been used to anyone training the, the intensity she was. She used to just thrash it and love it. Um, still does, obviously. Used to? Yeah, I know. She's, she's just like, used to? <laughs> but we, we, so we hit it off there. We were friends for a good year for ages. Like, I was like coming home, had like girls that I was seeing in between, and she'd come over and like she would see them whatnot and it was like obviously there was nothing ever serious and it ha it just happened in, in over in america in 2018 yeah. we went over together to do a pro show together and hit it off i i guess i was spent a lot of time after a long relationship just wanted to be myself do my own thing and em's just seeing these girls I mean, like she was just paying me out going she's such a bimbo like could you even have a conversation with her and like what are you seeing that chick and then it just kicked off and i was like you know what we've got this amazing chick right here who does what i do that's not I don't know, insecure about like you do. I'd see that so often meeting girls and stuff. Like, I don't know, you would have all heard it, like, you, especially social media. You like a girl's photo and you'd have a girl that you're seeing and why do you like that going off their handle? Like, so insecure and it's like, what? 
And I've got mates who be in relationships like that. I'm like, man, you've got to work on that. This relationship is not going to last if that's where the trust is. And just, you, you can't sort each other or work on yourselves enough to be in a position to be have that balance in a relationship and trust. So it went from there and it was like never looked back. And then we would do pro shows together. We'd prep together. And people were like, I don't know how you prep together. And we never found it too difficult. I honestly, like... She she would she thrives in chaos. I would probably not say thrive in chaos. Um, I overthink a lot of things. Where Emily would be like, "It's all good. You got this." Like, really cool. It takes a lot to to rattle her. Um, so she'd be that rock I'd lean on, and she'd be like, "All right, this is what we're going to do. Relax here, relax there." And then if she somehow had an off day, I'd be like, "All right, I've got it. Let's get up. One foot in front of the other." But like, that's literally how we got through prep. If I had a rough day, she'd carry me. And she'd be understanding of it. And then if she had a rough day, I'm like, you got this. Or she got in the head of, like, you know, the last few weeks, usually the last four weeks, where you start to get in your head going, I'm not there. You look at other people you know you shouldn't be looking at going on an Instagram, filtered Instagram photo, going, I don't think I'm there. I'm not going to not gonna do well. And that's usually people self-sabotaging. That's where it happens. We just have each other's back. And then it, it, it's like living the life. Well, what you said before, Alex, like it's, I don't think, I don't know how relationship were. I don't know how successful I would be in a relationship bodybuilding because I never, never had one outside of Emily before that was just rugby league. Um, so she knows she'd been doing it longer than me. So she, when I'd go quiet or get my own head, it was, wasn't like, hey, is our relationship okay? What's going on? You have like that last prep, she was like, he's hurting. I know what this feels like. Unfortunately, he has no choice here. And she'd say that. You have to suffer, babe. Like, there's no getting away way around it. So, honestly, it's, it's really refreshing to have someone there who, who just, like, shut the fuck up. I mean, go and do some cardio. She um, pulled me up on it a few times, and it hurts. Like, fuck to hear that from your partner because you're like, oh, <laughs> I know. I'm like, she, she would do it. <laughs> it's not like, I'm like, I'd love to see you do this. She would do it. So, I'm like, fuck. So, but it, it just worked. Yeah. And, and with Luna, like, like although she's probably was not old enough to take it in like me just being miserable getting around that's how i felt i was just miserable and i'm like I, sh I should love this and that used to piss me off as well i'm like why don't i love this as much anymore this hurt um but the pressure but yeah she'd just be like one foot in front of the other you got this like luna's fine i've got her um so it's just i think we're always so successful in what we do is because we understand each other so well and we're both very well it sounds like it sounds like you guys had a um a really strong friendship and and, and built a yeah. connection that was outside of you know the normal just lust and like you know sometimes obviously in your relationships you can get taken away with or you know like looks and like you know sex is great or whatever else that you know that happens um and and we, we are in an industry that is that is full of both men and women who you know are thirsty for um for, <laughs> for clout for fame for, you know, a bit of um, attention um, attention yeah attention. so it's like and and you know, even us as I suppose male coaches at times, you know, we have to be careful with you know, um, uh, I suppose trying to you know weed through the um, um, the shit that comes our way. Um, I, 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 there's no, you probably both get it as well. It's just like, but um, obviously having someone there who you know you build a real tr trust and, and friendship um, first with, you know what I mean? And it's like, hey, we're fucking like best mates, you know, and that's probably the ultimate life partner. Like my best friends, you know, easily. Yeah. Um, you know, I get on with uh, with her, and at the end of the day, if I have a shit day, I want to see her. If I have a good day, I want to see her. I mean, it's always, um, it's always her. So, if you have that with your partner, um, then a, there's no reason to look outside. You know what I mean? And b, it just it makes it easier to go through the ups and downs and know that you know overall we're still trending up always. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and I, I think the um the biggest take home from that, I mean, I, I I loved hearing that that entire story that you just told is so fucking similar to and i think i've may, may have, i think we've discussed this before um it is such a similar um story the, the way everything played out with you and m is so fucking similar to how things played out with tash and i yeah you know, um, you know the best like, thing about her is like you don't ever have to try and be someone else to impress someone like she knew who I was. She would see the shit I do with my mates when we weren't together as friends. You know, if I had, if yep. I was having a rough time at work or coming home on R and R, like just absolutely got it. Like she'd be like, "Oh, he's this is him down." Like I didn't have to try and impress her all the time. It's like this is who. And maybe, and yeah. you're, you're also a really down to earth guy. Like you know, as from, from when I've as long as I've known you, you yourself, you've always you know, I think that's what makes you a good bodybuilder as well. Because like you know, you have this real um, easygoing approach. Um, to most things and like you know generally really happy 
good energy sort of guy to be around, even though you don't feel like it at times. That's the energy you give off. Um, and so, like, obviously, that's, you know, it's, it's one that's great to be around. Um, and so, obviously, the, you know, for, for em, Emily's always had a similar feeling as well. So, for you guys, it just seems like it's sort of everything lined up um, to do it together. Yeah. And like, like we said, uh, relationships are always like, we've definitely had our ups and downs, you know, like we, we run a business together. We don't always see eye to eye and we're very, I guess, very pig headed with this. Win. Yeah. I, at the end of the day, I win less. Let's just say that I've learned to accept <laughs> that sometimes. I'd like, sometimes I think I fight with her more than what is necessary just because I'm like, I need to prove it to her that she's wrong here because I never allow <laughs> myself to win. Usually I'm like, all right, this isn't worth it. And I, that's and she's like, you're just arguing with me for the sake of arguing right now. Right? I'm like, yeah, just let me have this. <laughs> Sounds like it's, it's like, it's like arguing with hey boys, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey boys, I, I hate to be rude, but I've um I've got a good mate of mine's fiftieth uh, birthday that I've got to go to. Um, so if you guys want to do the recap on the uh, the shows, um, yeah, yeah, we'll get this. It was good to chat with you, Maddie. Um, I'll probably see you on uh, on the weekend. I'll see you both on the weekend anyway. I assume. Um, do, do me a favor when you up. hop off, just leave your uh, leave your screen or the tab open so it finishes uploading for me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. done, easy. Done. All right, brother. All right, boys. Well, uh, Thanks so much. We'll talk soon. See you in the weekend, bro. See you, bro. Um, Maddie, if, if um, Alex is offline, why don't you invite M to come um, to come review Victoria with us? That, do you, like literally next thing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, M, do you want to come jump on and review the uh, Victorian State show? As long as she wants to. Yeah, no, she's there. I know she's a couple of days out, so she's probably doing a heading. No, I'm actually fine. She's in, yeah, she's in fine. She's all turned up. You got first coat on. First coat done. Hi, Em, welcome. Thank you for joining us on the uh, IFBB broadcast. You've probably, probably been listening to us talking about you anyway. <laughs> so. I was, I was like, just sitting over there doing She's laughing work. is what she's doing. Yeah, good. Um, well, look, obviously, it's, um, it was really great to see you uh, do so well in Melbourne last weekend. Um, yeah, again, for everyone who doesn't know, M's a current WBFF pro, but obviously now competing with the NPC and IFBB Pro League, going for her pro card in wellness. Mm-hmm. M, if you want to give us five or ten minutes, just give us a quick rundown on your career, um, when you started competing, what you competed in, and then obviously what the goal is now for you. Um, well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I started competing, gosh, when I was like 21, um, I do believe. So a fair while away was, what am I now, like 30? 31. Yeah, 30. so a good 10 years. Um, and I started in ICN for quite a while. I did like the good season after season um, competing, which was fun at the time. And I did really well. I got my pro card in fitness um, within like my first two years of competing and traveled internationally with them as well. And then I came back, I did a figure with them and my feedback was like, you're too big. And I was like, oh, well, right. <laughs> let it go from here. It's the wor- It's the best negative feedback to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Um, so then I moved into my, I, did a, I actually did a NABBA show, um, which I didn't love the setup. It was a very small show and um, I, did, I did bigger, like proper figure. So like barefoot figure. So it was, it was full on. Um, like bodybuilding, yeah. Yeah, bodybuilding. Um, and I think I got second in that one. I like look at that stage. I didn't really know how to actually do this whole thing. I'd, I'd been winging it from day one in terms of like dieting and training. Didn't you say you used to just scroll through bodybuilding.com? Yeah, for us to I used get to get my, my diet off bodybuilding.com. Um, I didn't realize <laughs> that they had to, <laughs> didn't know they had, they had to be specific to me. Um, and I'd just cut like all carbohydrates essentially for like 11 weeks and get shredded. So but that's kind of proof that any plan can work as long as you follow the plan and actually do the work as well. Do you know what I mean? So up to a certain point, then we need to be a bit more yeah. personal and tailored with the approach for sure. Yeah. Look, and yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, if you follow something to the T, you're going to get some sort of result, right? So, um, and then I moved into WBFF what, in 2017, no, yes, like, 2000, no, 2015 was my first one. Sorry. Oh. Um, and I got my pro card, I think it was my second show, third show, um, in figure. Was it Anne-Marie who uh, wrote between the WBFF too? Yeah, no, I, so I had, I like, I wasn't really one of those people that had a coach. You didn't I didn't have a coach, did you? I didn't think I really, yeah, I, I would get ideas of people and talk to people about what I could, uh, what I should do. 
Um, and I didn't really stick with one person. I didn't really see the value in it at that point until I realized like bodybuilding is a, like a that all time thing, like 365 days type thing. So, um, not just 12 weeks, uh, not just a 12 week <laughs> thing. That was so, yeah, I resonate with people when they're like, Oh, I'll just jump on and do a prep. And you're like, mm, it's not like that. Um, but yeah, I actually went with Emery as well at the same time Matt did. Um, and that was probably like my first real insight into like what it should look like to do an actual show and what the setup for the off season and, and the prep the blood um, work, right? yeah, Food, everything. So, um, that was sick. And then now I've moved across to IFBB this year. So this is my first season. Was it the, always the, uh, the goal, you know, I asked Matt bit earlier as well. And obviously he fell into bodybuilding, um, through a similar story. Obviously, Anne Marie said he should give it a go. Has it always been a, a goal or a long term goal to move to the NPC IFBB? Or has, as your physique's developed, have you found that you just wanted to push that way to chase a certain look? Or, you know, what was your, your process for wanting to move to the IFBB? It was like always, I think when I first started WBFF, I always looked up to people like Nicole Wilkins, Wilkinson. Um, and she's a figure NPC, um, was figure NPC. And people like Dana Lynn Bailey and and women like that. So it was always like I wanted to move there, but I also didn't want to do figure in IFBB. I just didn't want that for me. And I knew the girls over there were quite big. Um, and I'm not a huge person by any means. I think a lot of people think I'm a lot bigger than I am, but I'm just small and jacked. So off, um, off season, off season, Emily is um or well, used to be a you know intimidating figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, with those quads hanging out, it put most guys to shame. But, um, <laughs> and then was, wellness, wellness kind of came out of the woodwork in the last couple of years, and I was like, I see myself there. So, um, it, have you had to change your like obviously your approach because wellness is obviously a very specific division aimed to I suppose do opposite from what we sort of try to achieve with bodybuilding, which is balance between upper and lower. Like you know, Maddie would have been a fantastic wellness athlete. When you first started, <laughs> but, yeah, what's, um, what's the the process been for you to change your approach um, from obviously your fitness in WBFF? Is that right? Yeah, our figure, figure. Not in WBFF, and then moving down into um, now to wellness. What's what's changed with the approach? So obviously, like there needs to be like a huge um, difference between upper body and lower body for wellness. So the focus was to build lower body, bring down upper body, um, which means that I was training four days a week, essentially three lower body sessions, one upper. The upper was really just for rehabilitation because I had my shoulder reconstruction probably around 18 months ago. So that was probably the biggest like catalyst in terms of the d division that I was going to move into um, because I couldn't really train upper body effectively. And it's still like, I'm, I'm good now, but um, I haven't like done any pressing movements for what, like 12 months. So, yeah, well, so I didn't know that. So you had an injury in the shoulder which limited how much upper body you could actually train is that right yeah so i was i was throwing a ball um <laughs> at matt and i dislocated my shoulder and i That's, tore like like every, an nfl ball it looked so ugly i tore so many things in my shoulder all in a short period of time she it's always it's always the uh the most simplest thing that that injures us you know i mean we yeah we right. squat so much in the gym we you know bench press whatever else but then we throw a ball or you know do something at the hospital like I, I laughed at the time, bro. I thought it was hilarious. Just the, the way the ball come out, it didn't look not, it was ugly. Dang. And I laughed and I saw her drop and she just started screaming. I'm like, I'd never heard her in pain um, other than having a bat child, obviously. <laughs> I was, it was worse. <laughs> I was just like, holy shit, if you, you're all right. And it was just dangling there. And I'm like, oh, that hasn't gone back in. That's not that. And then when we got to the hospital, it felt silly saying that to the doctors. And it's like, it's quite common. Cricket ball, football, yeah. we see it a lot. And I was yeah. like, oh, well, yeah, it sounds so like the, the, the wellness came at the um, exactly the right time then because it really did. you can continue developing the lower body. And um, and look, I always, I've said to everyone, everyone who's asked me, oh, how do you think M will go in, in wellness with the IFBB? And, you know, obviously I've always been a fan of your physique, you know what I mean? Um, given the symmetry and what you bring to the table with WBFF. But I thought, I always said, look, obviously M's an, an athlete, uh, number one, but how will she go? sizing down if that makes sense the upper body um for wellness not knowing you had an injury um yeah. i was like it's gonna be really interesting to see you know how much you can actually bring down the lower body um and then obviously keep growing the lower body um to get that um and, and honestly i think that you bring a really um great level of conditioning 
But sometimes in wellness, obviously, you want to find that balance between, you know, you, you can't be really too hard yeah. or too, too much separation, too much, which you're probably used to with figure. Yeah. So again, you know, almost sometimes what I imagine it would be probably holding back in terms of how hard you want to push things um, to keep that wellness look. Yeah, it's been, it has honestly been a, like a really like a difficult prep in terms of like, I know that I can look better or sh not better. Like, uh, yeah, I guess it's like, yeah, like sh leaner and I know that I can push harder, but it, like having to pull myself back, like the last couple of weeks I've just been on like maintenance calories or above to kind of bring that fuller physique. And I know a lot of people were like, you know, you can't win on conditioning and just like, they know that I can bring conditioning, but I'm like, I'm not chasing conditioning. Like I'm chasing the the criteria and that's that means that I have to pull myself back and that's fine. Um, but yeah, it has been really weird because I'm used to like just dying during prep and, and feeling that like death feeling and feeling like I'm there. But this time I've been like, well, I'm not dying. So like, what am I doing? And yeah. like, which is kind of surreal, especially yeah. competing for as long as you have been. We fall into this, um, I suppose, this you know, mind frame of, uh, well, if I'm not dying, then yeah. I must be doing something I'm wrong. Doing yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is this working? Oh, yeah. no, not... And I actually like the feeling of like back against the wall, fuck, I've got to push. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm also the same where it's like, for me, I've just started dieting for, uh, for the Chicago Pro in July 20. And, you know, previously I've last... Well, actually, when I turned pro um, last year, 12 months ago, we started dieting the day after my birthday, which was November 24. And I remember sending photos to Dean from um, the Gold Coast, actually. It was from Will Jim Ashmore. Uh, we were up there for a family holiday at Christmas. So it was Christmas Day. I went to the gym because it was a Friday, did my check-in, took the photo, sent it through to uh, the video, sent it through to Dean. And his response was, fuck. It was like four weeks and I was, he's like, you're basically ready. He's like... The show wasn't until April. You know what I mean, I was like, what the fuck? I remember doing? watching that prep. I'm like, where does he go from here? He's like, yeah, ready. It was like eight or 10 weeks out. <laughs> like, he because originally we had the Arnold Classic in mind, um, amateur in Ohio. Um, and that was obviously in March. So it's like, well, that wouldn't have been as bad because it's March 2nd. So it was a bit closer. My favorite look still from the whole prep was Feb 16. And <laughs> I've got that, um, that, that video on my phone thing. Fuck, man. Like, I wish I could have brought that to the stage. Obviously for me, I had a, uh, a problem with my C3, C4, so some nerve issues, which prevented me from training a lot of push for the later half of my prep. It was really actually lucky in the end, you know, obviously, you know, God knows best that I was in shape because it meant I could um, um, keep eating like in a surplus to keep whatever fullness possible through my chest uh, without losing condition. I wasn't, if I had to chase condition and, and like get yeah. really, really flat, I, I wouldn't have been able to do the, the, um, the, the show. So, Blessing the skies, obviously, was being in shape earlier because then obviously this um, nerve issue happened. Similar to thinking what Matt's um, experienced lately as well. And uh, if I wasn't in shape, then I wouldn't have um, obviously made the show. But Feb 16 is still my favorite look. And um, this, this this season, it's like as much as I want to start dieting, one, I was completely overeating, like 140, I think 140.8 was my heaviest fasted weight in the morning. Um, and so it was just like not miserable, but it was just like, Fuck, I'm ready to, to to diet absolutely. So I was pushing Dean, pushing Dean. He's like, Mike, if we start dieting, you're going to end up in the same position. Because <laughs> visually, I think for me, I hold a lot of water around my midsection and lower back. Um, I think I'm mad I've heard you sort of talk about this on your Instagram as well. So visually, in like an off-season setting, I'm never fat, if that makes sense. But like, I'm like, I'm not happy with my look. So yeah, I look watery and I'm, I'm eating 1,400 grams of carbs. So obviously, you know, there comes a lot of, retention with that sort of um food every single day and food residue just sits in the stomach and you're like fuck man i feel bloated all the time yeah but then the minute that starts going out now it's been like four or five weeks of dieting and i'm like oh fuck i took I took a video this morning and i was like just had veins everywhere that hard look coming through and i'm like oh. in my mind i'm like fucking happy but at the same time I'm like oh it's still 13 weeks so it's like <laughs> yeah, woo yeah. up woo up you're yeah. there again yeah pull, pull back a little bit just to um to ease it through so because again, I, I really feel like I think coming from for me being 140 kilos fat uh, when I was younger, before I started bodybuilding, you know, having that sort of like fat kid mentality, for lack of a better term, and never wanting to go back. Um, yeah. I always felt like starting late in bodybuilding. I started when I was 26 um, or 25, 20, just about to turn 26. 
And then obviously being overweight, I felt like I'm behind. I've got to catch up because you know people are starting when they're 17, obviously 18. You know, I'd look at Lee, Lee Priest when he was 13 and think, "Fuck," you know, <laughs> like I've got to, I'm behind. So I've got, to, I've got to, um, I've got to catch up. And so that mentality has always stuck with me, and great because it means that like there's no amount of work that I won't be able to do is, is how I feel. Um, but then obviously the, the the detriment to that is then that you know I do have to be careful with how much I, I, I put in, and I need the coach to tell me to pull back because there's there's so many times where I would like. I look at my pictures and think, if I had to make a decision, I'd just pull cows out. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, refeed. I'm like, what do you mean refeed? Like, you know, <laughs> that, that must be so hard for you because that competitive nature, oh, we just work. And he's like, you're good, you're good. Pull back here. Yeah. And look, that's what we have coaches for because at, at some point, like, you know, out of us wanting to do so well um, for ourselves, for our family, you know, for um, whatever else, then we can lose sight of, um, I suppose, what the look we're trying to achieve on stage. For yeah. years, I would, ever since we were, I've been with Dean, I would try and convince Dean to let me compete fasted. Doesn't matter if it shows at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m. I want as little in my stomach as possible when I hop on stage because I want to feel tight. Yeah. And then that's fine for an amateur show because, like, you know, you can obviously, Mac can get on stage, you know, I can get on stage at an amateur show and still be bigger than most people on there. Yeah. But it's like you stand next to the pros and they just burst in full and that's like, Fuck, man. I'm like, Dean, I'm going to eat. He's like, yeah, you've got to eat. Like, it's fucking, you know. I'm, so I'm very interested to see, and I'll be looking for feedback from you this year. Um, obviously, you have that experience over most other Aussie pros here, um, especially at that level, man, and just, like, how you manage that because I'm just like you, bro. The thought of eating on show day is, like, no way. Like, I'll, I'll need to be able to pull that stomach in as tight as I can. But then getting against the genetic elite like that or up on that higher level, you're like, I need every bit. I think it's really, really important to obviously just be in tune with your body. Like, you know, okay, so what foods am I eating? What foods can I eat a lot of and not, you know, distend and whatever else? And um, that's so, so critical when it comes time to show day. Um, and like, you know, how many times we see on, on stage, we watch pro shows and we think like, oh, fuck man, that guy's, you know, he's soft as, or he's spilled. Like, you know, how could anyone get on stage and look like that or whatever else at a pro level? But it's like, fuck man, these guys are pushing that, you know, the, the rev limit is max. It's like, you know, 7,000, 8,000 revs. They're trying to find, well, how much can I push in? And then unfortunately, 1% over can look 20% over so, so quickly. Yeah. Um, but when you're pushing that fine line and like pushing for every single, you know, I think gram of fullness you can get, it's it's easy to to make that that, that jump over as well. So I think this time, obviously, from for me anyway, look, I'm traveling overseas, I'll... I won't be as fit, um, prep fatigued the time we get to the show, um, and I'll, I'll, you know, having the experience of you know being on stage with fucking Big Rami and Samson, and and then competing, um, having that experience come through. Uh, you just obviously now you're more aware and, and what to expect, and you know more of what needs to be done. So I'm um, excited to get up there. Obviously, you know, there's like Hunter Labrada is probably going to do the show. Uh, you know, uh, some few big names that are coming through, so it's going to be um, sick to stand exactly. next. To them. Exactly what you want, bro. Yeah, I look at the end of the day, people always ask me, like, what are your goals? Like, what do you want to do? Like, I'm like, you know, what, what do you want to achieve with bodybuilding? I'm like, I've achieved more than I ever thought possible. When I started bodybuilding, people told me, give up, you'll never be nothing, you're a fat kid, like, you know, stop. And so for me, I'm like, you know, I saw people that I was competing against, like, coming up, like, you know, obviously Adam Rochester and, like, you know, Chase and, like, even Tim McKinnon and whatever else as well. And, and looking at all these great bodybuilders and physiques that I was competing against coming up, and it's like, and then I'm sort of um, still standing and still competing and um, competing at the highest level. So for me, it's like I, I've achieved more than I ever thought possible. For now, for me, I, I, I have a really competitive mindset, much like you guys have. So for me, it's healthy for me to put that into something. So bodybuilding's great. Um, uh, I, I'm going to give these next five, six years the absolute most I can. And then sort of, you know, six years' time, when I hit sort of 40, I'll, you know, um, I definitely don't want to be force feeding um, eight thousand cows at you know two a.m. for the rest of my life. So um, <laughs> for the next six years, we'll we'll give it the um, we'll push as much as we can, uh, see what happens. And like I said, for me, it's just all about you know whatever happens from now is um, a blessing and um, and something that I'll try and enjoy rather than be too pressure or too pressure intensive on myself anyway. And then show the kids, you know, I mean, obviously we you guys are the same. It's like. 
you know, having kids changes nothing but changes everything because like now it becomes more about, well, less about you and more about obviously them and, you know, and what sort of life you can, you can build for them, what sort of positive influences um, you can obviously instill on them, you know, what environment are you creating for them to, to be their best. Um, yeah. Because with kids, like we can't, you can't tell kids what to think and feel. Obviously, that's based on their own, you know, their own person, their own mind, whatever else. But we we have the, the opportunity to create the environment that influences the way they think and feel. So for yeah. me, it's just about trying to set the best example possible for you know the people they should try and um, look up to and be. And I'm not perfect, but you know, I'm, we're not. No one's perfect, and yeah. just trying to be the best example possible is really important for me over these next few years. And and um, ongoing um, because yeah, like I said, with cheat with kids, it um, changes nothing but changes everything. So it's um, so it, true. Until you know, it happens, no, people won't understand. Yeah, look, I was they don't, they don't understand um, until you you go through that yourself. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really really proud of I suppose for myself having a 12, 10, and eight year old um, and still being able to continue. You know what we're doing and like you know we went to America last year. We took them to Disneyland and like, you know, we, we you know, we, we gave them memories that like I never went to Disneyland as a kid. Like you know, was, uh, we, we were a poor family and let alone and, leave the country. <laughs> and like, you know, going to Mildura was our, that was our Disneyland, like, you know, <laughs> um, or whatever else. But uh, yeah, so to be able to show them the world and like, and even with tea now, it's like we're going to India next month for guest posing. You guys have traveled the world competing Europe with WBFF. I, I remember seeing online, whatever else. And, like, you know, it's a pretty cool fucking life. Yeah, like, it is pretty think cool. It, yeah. The experiences, the, the friends we get to make and we get to network across the world. Um, to think about some people never leave just the suburbs. Yeah, that's right. right. So, True. And look, that, that's good for them. I mean, obviously there's 8 billion people in the world because everyone wants different things, but I'm really, really proud of the, the life we've been able to, to build and create. And obviously, same with you guys. Now I coach full time. And for me, that allows me ultimate flexibility. I can take my laptop anywhere in the world and, and try and positive influence and impact more and more people, um, help them change their lives, not just bodybuilders, but just people in general as well. And um, because we know that obviously it always starts with wanting to look better, you know, wanting to look good naked in the mirror or, or whatever else, but then so much more comes with um, achieving, you know, a physique goal that you set for yourself, you know, more confidence, yeah. more belief in yourself um, and, and other areas of your life start to, to level up as well. So in saying that with your coaching guys, just to let you guys, I suppose, talk about your experience there. Um, you guys coach together and the King Bodies, is that right? Yeah. 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 So let us know how long you guys have been operating, you know, who are, what's like your the general clients, like, you know, what do they look like and, and what, sort of ex- what sort of experiences and what do you find the most rewarding thing you get to do with, with King Bodies? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can start there. Okay. Um, so I started this in 2015, um, and Matt joined me in 2017, and I got him off the tools at that yeah. stage. Um, and so far, we have five coaches uh, in different kind of areas, um, depending on like what our clients need. But like our our group of people that we service is usually like the the mum or the dad, they're probably like 30 to 40 years old. Um, they've tried a lot of things. Maybe they're like ex-athletes themselves and they're just looking to get back into it. Yeah. This is kind of who we've attracted, which I love. Like a lot of people think we would attract athletes and sometimes we do. We don't put that out there because like it's, it's not the group that I love to work with. It's more so people that are just getting back into it or postpartum mums or pregnant mums or people that are just like really looking for that guidance Um, because I was a nurse also in the past. I have like a different level of understanding um, of the body as well. And I like to be able to help people before they end up in the hospital. So we get get a lot of chronic conditions as well. Um, But the base, the one that the thing that I love the most about it, like I I think I talked about this on my stories last night, is just like breaking those beliefs that people have, like that they can't eat carbs or they'll get fat if they eat like a chocolate bar or something like that. And we work with a lot of general population clients that do honestly believe that when they come to us. And yeah, it's crazy to think that still, still people come to us with that belief idea, system. That belief system. And these people are usually like 30 or 40 and they've been living in, in fear of food for yeah. such a long time. So just being able to it's allow. Scared to eat fruit. Yeah. You know? well, where, do you, where do you think that comes from for most people? Social media, 100%. Like a lot of it stems from what they've been taught from their parents as well or what they've learned in school. Um, and then some of it's social media. That, this is the big thing. It's like where the whole keto bandwagon. Yeah, look, it works for some individuals. It definitely 
is benefits to it, but it's one one approach. Like you're just creating a calorie deficit when it comes to fat loss. So, and a lot of the time we're just re-educating people going, that is marketing. That's people marketing that so damn well. It's a narrative people trying to push, trying to get like a band camp to get everyone on board. And it's attractive that way thinking people, that's what they need to do. I can't, cannot eat one gram of carbohydrates. Like that's the only way to lose weight is removing carbohydrates completely, not understanding the key fundamental, it's energy balance. So, and for, it's, it's difficult at times with ad clients. Um, I would say more women, men are pretty good. Like men, you show them the evidence like, oh, okay. I'm happy with that where women are like, oh, they're really tired to going, oh, I've, it's white rice. Like, I don't know, like, oh, some or fruit. bread. bread or I don't know, like, yeah. And it's like, yeah, well, we're gonna have to keep there, going. actually, just on that as well. And there was this woman in this cafe um, last week that was in, and she was explaining to a friend on the phone with her new diet that she's on. And she's like, it, like I don't work word for word, but there was like, okay, so I wake up, I have a coffee, and I don't eat anything until 4 p.m. At 4 p.m., I have a piece of cheese and an apple. Uh-huh. At 7 p.m., I have a glass of red wine. Oh, no. And then at 8 p.m., I eat basically whatever I want. Right. It's just like this total, just like anyway. And you hear these things and you're like, where the fuck have they yeah. heard this? Well, like, you know, who's who's given this in, this information? Um, yeah, and that's, ultimately, that's, go on. That's perfect, Mike, because we would have people coming from the intermittent fasting band camp and they're like, they will fast and they'll have that period, that small window of where they eat and it'll be KFC, McDonald's. And you're like, so you're trying to do fasting for fat loss and these health benefits, but then you consume that type of food, like, and, and have a red wine or two beers. Like, yeah, but I had it in that window. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm just like, no. you know, from, from what I hear from you guys, obviously, you know, helping to educate people the fact that, you know, they can achieve a physique goal that they have. First of all, hey, it's okay to have physique goals. You know yeah. Because I mean? a lot of people feel like shamed, you know, especially their parents as well. Like a, a lot of mum guilt exists out there. And something that even that T struggled with for a long time when she first became a mum or we became a family was, she went from feeling like, well, no, I can't, you know, make time for myself because that, you know, I'm taking time away from the kids or from maybe yeah. from me as well. Um, so that mum guilt really kicks in with a lot of, I suppose, mums in, in, in particular. Um, but then recognising obviously the fact that, you know, you at your best is a better mum, a better partner, a better, better person in general. So why not try and optimise, um, you know, what you can in terms of, um, yeah, being the be- you know, your best version of yourself. So then that's more to give everyone else. Um, yeah. But then, then again, obviously teach people that they can have physique goals that, and then they can achieve these physique goals by following a, a, a diet or a structure that's, you know, not fucking miserable, um, yeah. more enjoyable and fits in with their life. And then it's about obviously from there creating positive patterns and behaviours that support um, sustainable results long term. Um, yeah. yeah. Not that's just an, an eight week or 12 week challenge where you completely cut everything out. Yes, you lose a lot of weight, but, you know, I always say, we're not aiming for weight loss, we're aiming for fat loss, for sure. Yeah. But it's not, you know, it doesn't matter what you weigh in the scales. It's a tool to help us and guide you in the right direction, but it's never about what you actually weigh. No one gives a fuck, like, if yeah. they, what you weigh. There's not scales on every single, you know, shopping center that you walk through that says, hey, yeah. my you can't come in because you're X amount of weight, whatever else. Funny that I went to, I went to, Matt, have you ever been to, um, to uh, um, Wet and Wild? I haven't done Wet and Wild, so no. no drink, drink Wet and Wild. I went there with Sam Pierce on New Year's Day. <laughs> and we're gearing up for fucking every single ride. We had the kids with us as well. And we get to the, the we line up for like an hour, New Year's Day, to get and get to the fucking front of this line. And they're like, oh, well, how much do you weigh? And we're like, uh, what's uh, the limit? They're like 120. We're like, oh, I'm 119. I'm like, no worries. <laughs> they pull out scales, right? And put the scales down and go hop on. And I'm like, fuck. And we're like 128, 128. <laughs> <laughs> We fucking were out on one ride and went wild. Anyway, I was just. I am. Um, I'm not big enough to have that problem yet. But the first time I had it was in Bali. Out of all they places in Bali, they pulled me up and weighed me to go down the, the biggest slide, and it was a 130 kilo. What, was, that, was, that, was that water bomb? What the water, yeah, water bomb? Yeah. And they're like 130. I'm like, trust me, I'm not 130. And they're like, no, no, no. Yes. And they're holding me up to get on the on the scales. I'm like, I literally weigh myself every morning. I'd like to be 130. <laughs> I'm like 123. And they're like, no, you must get on the scales and sure as shit. There it was. I'm like. Uh, most yeah. people get upset, but I'm like, no, I meant I want to be one thirty. I'm not there. Yeah, it's um, anyway. Fuck you, wet and wild. Hold my money back. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no disclaimer, you know, when you pay your entry fee. Yeah, but, it should um, be like weight limit right. applied to some rides. But thanks for um, thanks for sharing that, guys. As well, obviously, if you guys want to 
check out uh, Matt and M online. It's is it King Bodies on the Instagram or what's the, the yeah. King Bodies on Instagram? Team King oh, Bodies. Team King Bodies online. Is it or just Team King Bodies? Team King Bodies. I should well, know. Be online. Uh, online coaching is what the company's called. So check them out. Obviously, get in touch and um, you know, obviously, they work with a whole range of people, um, but their lifestyle and clients. And the main thing is, obviously, I think that sometimes we as athletes, um, I know for me. I'm going through a phase where I'm really, I'm really trying to shake the stereotype of only attracting athletes, if that makes sense. I've, I've helped hundreds of people once they get to know me and whatever else in the gym, out of the gym. But online, the presence of, you know, yes, I'm a bodybuilder, but, you know, I'm trying to, I can help. A lot of people. So it's, at times, I think people can get maybe intimidated to reach yeah. out because they think that, like, because I'm so structured and, you know, by every single gram and, and you know, so extreme in but i'm trying to achieve extreme results so the whole point is that like you don't have to have extreme goals you can have you know general goals and we can still help you get there um, yeah because I, I do obviously enjoy helping people and and, and seeing them level up in their, their mindset and you know again what positive influences that creates within the family um because you know when the kids are around macas and junk food and alcohol and cigarettes and that sort of that sort of stuff um you know obviously when there's a change in the house all of a sudden everyone starts eating different and then it just becomes um it's, i mean look one thing in my household it's like every like even for me growing up we always had to have dessert and like a lot of friends i know always have to have dessert ice cream like it's a big thing where it's like my kids are like they snack on meat <laughs> like just meat out of the fridge they never want dessert like and so it's we haven't tried to create that if it makes sense but again just being around that i suppose the influence they've never yeah. they never look for it that i'm sure when they're out they'll have something sweet whatever else but they never it's not like a must be in the house and um again yeah, just that's so yeah, yeah that's right that's an environment they grow up in and that's so normal for them they see dad get after it they see mum get after it you know and that's what we try and teach a lot of our clients like what you're doing right now like you're you're literally setting your children not like well, them because most of them have families like these habits that you're creating this lifestyle is just going to be or even culture is going to be so normal for them that for other people it'd be weird going what you what do you mean you don't exercise you don't go for a walk mm. you don't go to the gym you're not driven to be successful in, in whatever your personal endeavors are like just watch mum and dad do that my entire life you know 100 um all right guys well before we take on too much longer i want, did want to have a quick uh, review of the uh, big show, so Em will get to review herself on stage. But um, <laughs> Em, I'd love to if you stuck around and maybe just gave us a help looking at the girls because you know I never, I never wanted to be like two guys sitting here looking at it's just chicks on the sure, stage. I will <laughs> stick around. Exactly Not knowing what we're looking at. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share my screen, guys. Just pull up the IFBB. We'll just flip through some main results. So just give me a second. I'll share that screen now. All right, if you guys can see my screen there. I can see screen. Can you see me share screen? Yep. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So this is the um, IFBB page. Um, so we had Victoria last week. Um, it was a, wasn't as big as New South Wales, but it was still a, a stack show. Um, the size of the shows this year, though, I'm not sure if you guys agree, but it's been really good because, I mean, when you have, you know, 400 crossover competitors, it's like the judges are so redlined to just smash people through. They don't get, I, I feel, they get their, their chance on stage, but it's nice when they have a chance to do maybe a couple of, you know, a couple of goes through the the, um, the quarter turns and and the, and obviously the symmetry rounds and whatever else. Or when the, the girls aren't rushed to the tee walks and like, you know, they, they before they even finish, they're pushing the one off stage to get the next one on stage. So it's nice when you have the chance to let everyone enjoy the time up there because obviously we know they put in a lot of work. Sometimes when it's over in two minutes, it's kind of like, oh, fuck, here's that. <laughs> Yeah, so, it was like, that was so quick. Yeah, it's gone. You blink, it's gone. Um, so if we look at here quickly, if you guys can see, this is the um, uh, the physique, which was first. So this is um, Mr. Druitt, Wayne Druitt online. He's been um, up there for a little while in terms of like um, just just pushing the um, the boundaries in terms of um, results. He, he's won the Victorian overall, I think, a couple of times now, being second um, – been second in like uh, in nationals, narrowly missed out on pro cards. The guy from the back has a a really really good back. I'm just going to show you his Instagram here. Just um, yeah, oh, I don't no, follow him. No, you have to. Rude, you're not even following him. Yeah, I know, I got to follow him. Um, <laughs> but look, he, from the back, he's um he looks sensational. So I think that when I talked to Brett, um, one of the head judges afterwards, and we we're just sort of debriefing on what a good shot it was, he was sort of mentioning that the um. 
this decision here was basically one winner from the front, which was probably Fab, the guy who yep. plays second, and then drew it from the back. But drew it was just so dominant from the back that it got him the um, the overall win there in the end. So um, yep. the great thing is, obviously, it's, it's, it, it was a really good, high quality show between these two, especially. Um, and Fabian, you know, obviously, he can he's got four weeks, three weeks to to get better from the back, try and be a bit sharper. Obviously, he's not going to build any muscle, but get a bit sharper and then really, I suppose, look to change that decision come national. So that's the great thing when you do have a close result um, that you can you know, get it. Obviously, with a good turnaround, you can essentially reverse that decision come nationals. Um, what do you think? Uh, what do you think, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't. So yeah. I didn't get to see these guys. I was out the back helping them. But just from as soon as you showed me the two winners there, you could see that it was going to be tight between the two. Both really sharp from the front. That's the back shot you're referring to. So in terms of density thick. from the back, it's nice and thick as well. Condition there, lower back's tight. Yeah, he just pops from the back. Yeah, you know, and- pops. That more pop than than the other guy. Did you say? I missed yeah, the other guy's name. What was his, the other guy? Fab. The second is Fab. Yeah, really sharp from the front there. Yeah, great arms, great delts. Um, yeah. But yeah, just like I said, so from the back, probably a bit more pop and density. But again, if he brings in a bit tighter conditioning, anything can happen. So that's it. Like that's it. You if Drew misses and stuff something up at nationals, that's like if you're on point, you've made the improvements, taken the feedback um, from the judges. Like that's that's where you can sneak in and take that win if he's off one percent. So this is um, Classic Junior here. Now, I wanted to show this one because this is Jamie Mears. Um, and I thought when he came out, like, he looked like yeah. didn't look like much when he wasn't posing. But when yeah. he posed, like, he just looked fucking really impressive. The wheels on him, like, yeah. good, good solid wheels. They stand out straight away. So it wasn't until he's one of those guys, it wasn't until he opened up and flexed, you were like, oh, this guy's all right. And he was, he was peeled from the back. Um, he hit this, like, spinning back shot, like an Arnold sort of style pose. And it was like really, really dense across the whole, you know, shoulders to back and traps and stuff. So uh, it was really impressive to see to see him on on the stage there. Uh, moving on, obviously we had Jackson Gruen who kind of dominated most divisions that he entered throughout the whole day. You know, really impressive. I know Jackson's obviously can, uh, prepped a few times prior to this, um, but the first time making it to stage. So congrats to Jackson and the team. I know he's really big on the team that supports him. Um, but congrats to Jackson, um, who won, I think, Classic, um, True Novice, Novice, and then Opens. Um, he won as well for his class. And then he was the Classic overall champion. He was uh, an absolute standout for me. I'd never come across Jackson before. And I was like, I, we turned up for the show and Em was getting tan there right right before Andy was packing up. And he ran out and literally just after winning that, getting ready for bodybuilding. I was like, who is this guy? And then I had a few people around me at the time going, he just wiped the floor with classic. And I just the density on him and like uh, the like complete like structure. And I, don't, I then went in to watch him do bodybuilding because I thought, oh, this will be interesting to see how he goes in bodybuilding as well. So I didn't know how who was turning up. And then someone said he was 24 and I was just like to, to have that density, um, be quite complete, like lower body was and be a tall guy as well and have, have wheels. I was yeah. like, fire out. I was very impressed. Yeah. This was the um the open B class, obviously. And look, he, he was um, really impressive because obviously it's surprising that he makes weight, first of all, because he's quite a big yeah. guy. Um, That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> but then, but then look, he has a nice um, presence on the stage, which demands sort of to be looked at. And obviously, look, you've got Ryan here in third, and Ryan's a seasoned veteran, but, you know, a great um, – you know, great bodybuilder who on on any day, if someone's off, will catch him. That's for sure. Um, and this is Daniel Sands here. So Daniel Sands, um, again, I think this is his first time he's made it to stage as well. Uh, yeah. He's done a couple of preps before. The first time making it to stage, and he got a really pretty physique. So this was a this was a really good battle between them. Um, you know, I've talked to Daniel. I think Daniel's got everything that he needs. Um, some of the feedback was to change his trunks. You can see here his trunks are sort of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old school one, which doesn't do anything for his waist. He needs this this trunk to come up higher, the thinner mm-hmm. band at the side, because that'll create more like the appearance of more sweep, and then yep. making his waist look smaller. Um, yeah, also, Jackson's here where they're a bit thin at the sides, and so it creates that sweep more through the quads. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, them trunks make such a difference having them on the cut around the waist. Hundred um, percent. You can see here like how thin his are at the side here, and he just like. 
you know, the great thing is you can fix that easily in three weeks. So um, Stephen Wilhelm here came, uh, was in the overalls while he won his class, the Open A. Stephen has been around for a little while competing. Um, he's got a really nice physique, really nice shape when he opens up. Um, obviously not the most um, dense guy around uh, size-wise, but in classic, it's not all about that. So I think that he's got a really good future ahead of him. Um, you know, a bit more muscle, make, you know, Max had his weight cap and if he keeps that structure, he'll, um, he'll definitely go a long way in bottom. That was Stephen Wilhelm. Um, I think he trains down at Dan Dong Doherty's as well. So classic was a, was even though Jackson dominated, classic was still a really competitive lineup, um, all the way through. Yeah. So it looks, it looks um, at there's quality there and yeah, in all the divisions. There's a few I mean, more than characters in so. here. Jackson looked great. Yeah, you know? And look, Jackson, Jackson could have been a bit tighter as well. Like there was a couple of shots where his condition was great, but he could definitely tighten up a little bit before nationals as well. And, you know, in classic, it's um, there's some there's some quality competitors out there. Like we've got Joe obviously up in Queensland this week, who I think is in um, probably career best condition, um, which is all he needs to do is bring more condition. And then you've got um you've got fuck I always forget, Cam from um, South Australia who's looking out oh, Yeah, Cam, yeah. That's Dean's guy. Yes, Dean's guy. So it looks looks. He looks he's gonna bring the condition. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. Um, shout out to Big Harry Vlahos. This guy does every single Masters show <laughs> there is. <laughs> I actually, I actually, Harry beat me my first ever IFBB show back in there, really twenty fourteen. So um, anyway, he was a um, first. Jackson won true novice bodybuilding. Um, Jackson then won novice in bodybuilding. <laughs> um, Stephen who won his class in classic also won his class in bodybuilding as well um that. and then you had obviously um dimitrios who was a bit of the surprise packet for me um this dimitrios went on to beat jackson jackson won the super heavies um being out sean and dale and then obviously you had dimitrios winning the overall in a really really tough battle i'm not sure if you guys saw it but they went back and forwards and it could have gone either way for for in a portion of the time there. But Demetrios, I think the right decision was made in the end. Um, I think Demetrios just had like that bit of hardness and his conditioning um, shone through. And, and to me, that's a bit more bodybuilding-esque, if that makes sense at all. Um, yeah, absolutely. Right. I, I did totally agree with you, Jackson. Obviously, he was probably not trying to nail condition that at Vic, but that was why he he definitely had to tighten up to be on par with Demetri here. Yeah. So I think back, not so much. Right. What's that, mate? I think from the back and Jackson's conditioning, just he'll bring that in the next couple of weeks. But that's where Dimitri definitely shone. Yeah, I think Dimitrios. You know, the only thing I can give him is just his posing. Like I know in his front double, he was kind of like when he hit his front double pose, he was really leaning back in the pose. Yeah, and obviously not leaning forward to create that. You know, to more um, obviously shape from the the judges' perspective who were sitting below us. Um, but then this is feedback, obviously, that he'll get. You know, you should, you should just go and just practice his posing every fucking day with a posing yeah. coach and make sure he comes in and doesn't let that be the one thing that lets him down because it was good enough against Jackson, but against, you know, guys in, uh, well, you know, the guys who are going to come against him up in Queensland. Um, and then obviously we've got David from um, South Australia. You know, if, he, if he's looking to take that next step. And look, I think that once you win an overall, um, you know, you've got to be looking at sort of, you know, uh, taking it all the way in nationals as well. It's definitely got to be now on the landscape. Um, uh, and so if he wants to improve that, I think that, yeah, just working that posing and making sure he's he's posing um, to his physique and, and, and really holding every pose as effortlessly as possible. You know, obviously yeah. we're squeezing, squeezing, but sometimes when you see guys who are like really, really shaking, it's like it's a little bit off-putting as well. And um, so I think the more he practices that, the better he'll he'll be for it um, at nationals, but yeah, great, great physique and great condition. Yeah, yeah, it's um, he, yeah, absolutely. It's posing's like one one thing. So all the amateur athletes listening out there, like you hear it from every coach, like pose, 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 and you're so worried on getting getting in condition, uh, putting a lot of pressure on yourself, and you just sort of put that to the side, and that's the one thing that will bring you undone. So it's the one thing you need to be, especially if it's close and you're doing a battle like that in the overall where the judges are probably looking to see who's going to fade first and you yeah. start shaking, you start sweating, uh, you, you can't hold your stomach in. Like that's what's going to bring you undone. So, and I think that um, actually, Jackson, not to uncut you off there, brother, but Jackson, yeah. when you saw him in the overall, um, 
obviously he had done every division from classic yeah. all the way through. So by the time the overall came, he looked like he was sort of, you know, not in a bad way, but he looked like he was gassing. Do you know what I mean? And so yeah. um, obviously probably... You know, I, th- I thought that at the time, bro, because I knew he'd done classic and then I watched him when I, he went back in there in bodybuilding. I'm like, he, he did so well to continually back it all up. Yeah. So, and he, look, um, guys, just a quick shout out for IFBB, obviously... You yeah, see these like again. little videos they're doing now as well. So these videos now, um, I think from Brownie Gaines and I think it's Vito or um, Villain. Um, he's doing these videos now. Who you know, and, and athletes can purchase these, so they're yeah, really so cool because they get to, they catch you like all these candid sort of um, shots backstage, walking on stage, and you know, obviously yeah, really good. that's so good. And that's that's Demetrios there, bro. Right? So that's what yeah. you're pointing out right there, Mike. So just Leaning back on that front lat spread, yep. leaning back on the front double bar. He breathing, was just breathing yeah. too much through his stomach. So it looks good. He's just got to, yeah, remember where the judges are viewing from. Like, like said. And even like this side tricep pose, like, you know, he can just position his legs a little bit better, I think, um, to, to make his hamstring pop a bit more. Um, and that comes with experience, obviously. We look at it now as, you know, experience, but um, breathing and just and, and posing, obviously, and just holding that stomach in the whole time. Milo Sarsev says it the best. Milo Sarsev Sarsev says belly button to spine, and it doesn't move. That's got to be the. And if it does move, it only moves when you're facing away from the judges. Yeah, so, so um, true. That's something I try and push it with my guys a lot as well. So moving on now, um, we yeah. have yeah. First of all, this was um, Beck. Beckles, who um, won pretty much everything she entered. I think she came from, she's an ICN pro, I think um, a NABA, I think she's a NABA pro shows as well. Um, by experience for a long time. So she did novice with, because obviously her first show with IPB, she did the masters and then she did the opens um, and she won everything. So she looked great, great shoulders, great arms and had good conditioning. Yeah. Um, so I thought she looked, she looked really good and was probably a, you know, for her, Fairly judge winner. We had um, Shah here. We all know Shah. She looks great. You know, and I, I prep with Shah, but she um, she got in really good condition. You know, she looks fantastic for um, for anyone. But when then when you add in the fact that she's 50, 51 years old, she's she lost fifty it. kilos to get here. Um, you know, yeah, she's... absolute workhorse, and he's done very well, man. Like her condition is awesome, and I like what, what, how long have we known Shah for three, four years. Three years now, yeah. You know, I think he's back in WBFF days. To see where she's progressed to now at her age is like wild, in, it, wild inspiring yeah. for for many many women. You know, yes. so that was Beck there as well. Then we had obviously Beck and right. and Shah. And look, obviously the difference here we can see is with Shah. We know we know it. We just need to cap off these shoulders a touch more. When you see when those the figure the capped delts is really really um, important because it just creates more of that X frame that you want to see with yeah. a few girls. Um, and so that's what we need to work on with Shah. But um. Yeah, the good thing is that life begins at fifty for Shah, so she's willing yeah. to do anything and everything to um to to make it uh make it there as well. So shout out to Shah, shout out to um to Beck who won yeah. the overall and she'll go to nationals with some confidence. We then had wellness. Um now with wellness, this was um true novice. So a couple of um first time girls there. Then we went on to novice, um couple of first time girls and first time girl in <laughs> IFB. Emily, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then obviously Em went on to the Open, and then was our champion as well. And Em, you look, I think you nailed it. Um, obviously, you're working with I think Luke, um, yeah. and I think you guys bought a really good um, level of conditioning. It wasn't too much, but it was just enough um, to really, I think, you know, nail that wellness look. And we talked about your transformation from figure with WBFF down into the wellness. Category. When I say down, just obviously downsizing the upper body, but yeah. you know you've, you've lost no density at all to the legs. Your waist and stomach coming back like that, um, especially after having a baby, massive credit to you. Um, you've obviously done an outstanding job, um, and I imagine that you know I don't know for a fact, but I imagine you would have been you know, really regimented, you know, during your pregnancy and then probably post pregnancy to make sure you brought that stomach back in and tighten back up as much as possible. So. Um, Credit to you. Um, Thank you. How was it been up there? Yeah, it was actually so good. Um, I won't be doing novice in Brisbane because I don't think it's very fair of me to be a pro and going in well and a novice, but um, you might want to get your... Yeah, um, But 
it was actually it was just good to like shake off some nerves figure out how to move on stage how long I was going to be there what the rounds felt like like that was kind of the most important thing to just figure out what it was going to feel like um but yeah I got off and everyone was like well done and I, I needed to be able to see myself so that was like the first thing to kind of review videos and footage of what I was looking like but yeah, it was sick. It was a really good. It was a really good show to be part of. Okay, um, Cash looked good. Cash was obviously a, a bigger girl. Um, you know, big lower body on her. She, she yeah. in second the um, opening. Obviously, I think conditioning just probably let her down a little bit in terms of like you know what she, um, needed to like to to compete with someone like you at the top level. But again, the great thing is if conditioning is something that can be fixed in a in a short amount of time frame. So she um, honestly she, looked like mint. Like I looked yeah, at the yeah. videos and I was like. Guys, she was a lot closer than um, than I than I thought as well. Like the, the back shot it, and the side shot. For, to me, myself and Luke at the back, he said, "This girl was like, who's she? Like, you see her yeah. backstage? I had no idea." And then when she came out and stage, I'm like, "She has a lot of muscle." Yeah, yeah, so. she had a lot of muscle. So she just obviously, um, yeah. Once she brings conditioning, then it's a totally different look as well. Yeah. So, um, but I think clear win, obviously. M, congrats, and on to the Queensland this weekend, which is cool, exciting, um, home Very soil. Exciting. Home, home, um, home fans as well, and I think honestly, like if, just talking about it, Queensland's going to be stacked for wellness. Yeah, um, it's going to be really good. It's going to be really Scott good. Megan, I think I'm um, on Holly Gaines, uh, Matt's um, partner, and she's got a you know really good rear shot. Um, yeah. And then you obviously got Mel, who's just got you know really cool proportions. I think for um, for wellness as well. So yeah. to see to see all you three on stage together will be. Uh, definitely a treat for the crowd, a little preview of, of nationals. Yeah. Um, and good on you for like, you know, because you could have easily, I think, you know, obviously taken the win in Melbourne and just gone, you know what, I'm going to pack this up and just um, and just keep it under wraps until nationals. Um, but backing it up the next week, up in your home state, I know you were down in Melbourne anyway, so you thought, why not jump on and, yeah. and give it that run? Um, but coming from someone who has done back-to-back -back shows, it's, it's definitely, look, it's not easy. When you love it, you just do it anyway because it's part of it. But it definitely can take a toll. So, um, yeah, credit to you for jumping up again and um, and giving the crowd what they want to see. You you were keen for that, though. This I was actually so right. keen because, like, with with F, like WBFF, you only get to do one show. So, being able to do like multiple shows has actually been a really nice kind of way of uh, like celebrating the end of prep, essentially. Like, showcasing, yeah, showcasing that as well. So, yeah, and look, I think that um, obviously when you looked at obviously you know. We, when and if you get the pro card, um, it's traveling overseas and competing. Like, you know, these girls are doing a lot of shows and we've seen a lot of success with the Aussie wellness girls overseas recently as well. Obviously, we had Denai winning last year and yeah. making the Olympia. We've had um, Alicia get amazing results, you know, in, in deep lineups this year as well overseas. So, but when you go overseas, like you're going to do three, four shows back to back because yeah. otherwise it's kind of not worth traveling, if that makes sense. So, yeah. being able to... Um, been able to do that here now. You're you're really, um, I suppose, getting a, a taste for what that's like backing it up, traveling, backing it up week to week. You know, which is yeah. again something you might have to do when going overseas. Um, but yeah, moving on to bikini now. We've got here um, bikini junior Madeline. I thought looked great. Thinks is Tabby Knight's client. She looked really really good. Um, I saw yeah, she did a really nice. quick prep too. So she did amazing to like nail it for that. Yeah, and a great, great bikini shape. We've got the yeah. bikini masters here, which um, they looked fantastic as well. Um, true novice, and then we had through to the uh, the novice, and then on to the opens. And so I think this was a little bit of a um, Scott versus Troy um, show. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like um, most bikini showdowns are Scott versus Troy in some. It's either Scott versus Troy or Troy versus Troy. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But look, Troy obviously does a great job with his bikini girls, Team Destroy. Yeah. Um, Katie, who was, I think, working with um, with Scott. Uh, um, yeah, she looked beautiful. Yeah, looked great. Beautiful. Conditioning was, like, spot on. Yeah. Um, Taylor, who won the Open B. Yeah, and Crazy. I think Taylor's got a, you know, presentation was flawless because obviously yeah. that's, that, that's what she does. Um, but I think that she looked um, – she's obviously got a great bikini shape. She's been close before. We know that. Um, yeah. But I think she could probably tighten up the condition a little bit. Um, especially from the back. Um, but again, they've got time. Troy knows what to do. So it was a really good battle between them for the overall. We'll see a couple of videos of it here. Um, you know, both got great bikini shapes. Yeah. You can see here, yeah, from the back shot, yeah. Katie was just a little bit tighter from the back. Yeah. 
Um, I found they had um, go on them. Uh, just a few weeks, and, and Taylor will like tighten up from the back because like she's like lean. Like when you see her in on her Instagram, like yeah. I, I think I mentioned the other one is super lean. So lean, so like she's so close. Yeah, I think yeah. just from the, from the back, it was just a little bit sort of like, yeah, well, you know, from the front, very, very close, but from the back, um, probably the right decision in the end um, to Katie. And, yeah, to look, it's exciting going to um, two nationals. I mean, look, Bikini's always super, super close. So um, super competitive. Um, and obviously up at Queensland, we've got Aaron Pilates guest posing. So shout out to Aaron. Um, mm. There was Em back there. I <laughs> think. <laughs> <laughs> they've got Aaron Pilates guest posing. It's going to be exciting to see a, an Aussie pro on stage. You know, we love to see that. Um, it's good to be able to support our pros and give them some experience before they head overseas. Um, so it'd be really, really great to see um, to see, yeah, Aaron on stage. And th- these are the videos I was talking about as well. I think um, this is Brownie Gaines creating a bit of a like a real sort of montage, um, which is great to see. And obviously. So much of what we post these days is, you know, video content, reels and whatnot as well. And, you know, really brings physiques to life when you can see them moving and flexing. And sometimes the quality of like the content um, with IFBB is, has been really good to see just like the celebration of the athletes and from like an athlete perspective, it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think that obviously we, we put a lot into the preps. So to, ha- to be able to, you know, get something like this where it's, because sometimes you see a, a photo and it, yes, it says something, yeah. But then the video just says so much more about what's actually happening. Um, yeah. That's so I think this is a really, really cool move by um, by the IFB to to get to to be able to offer some of the athletes, you know, something really memorable to take away. So if you're yeah. if you're watching this and you haven't um, got onto it, um, get in touch with IFB Pro League, and I think you can purchase your package through their official website and pre-order yeah. them. Uh, they're shot by Brownie Gaines, Ethan, and Dylan. Um, I'm not sure who Dylan is, but obviously does an amazing job here. Um, but yeah, that's, I think it's a really cool move by the IFB to uh, to have that as an option. So we are officially. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, guys. One second. Okay. No, we are sorry. officially. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of like a lot. Yeah. Um, but we're officially. What's that? Two days out. Um, but look, yeah, two days out. Obviously, from the the Brisbane show. Yeah. We fly up tomorrow, me and T, and we'll be up there uh, with Undefeated, the stand with the official season A merch, mm-hmm. um, which obviously you guys are great to support us as well. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually you'll be there. getting another T, Mike. That's how much I enjoyed my T last week. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah but, um, but they sit well, don't they? They, they just, just sit well, you know. When you're, like, out, again, you're bigger than me, but when you're bigger, I don't like hugging it and you just don't want it to look too boxy, but it goes across your shoulders and arms nice. And then drops from us where it's not. Yeah, that's, that's what well, I think. That, like you know, I really try and put a, a lot of. I say it all the time. It's a bit of a passion hobby of mine. You know, um, the merch and sort of blending that one finding clothes that fit when you get bigger, but then obviously have it look you know good and you know, and obviously it, I think that um you know I when you get big t-shirts sometimes. You're right. They just sit like a dress, and it's like, well, I don't want to look like a fucking dress all the time. I don't want to look like a fridge right yeah. now. Yeah, a fridge. You know, so a bit of bit of shape, a bit of like you know, like the longer sleeves. And um, look, I'm with undefeated as as far as the the merch goes. We've got leggings coming. We've got like a full range coming. So I'm really excited to put some some of my um, I think creative drive into that as well. Uh, yeah. That's definitely something that I enjoy doing. Well, leggings are an nightmare to design and create. Yeah. Just trying to get the the stretch right, and you know. He's like, oh yeah, but that waistband's too thick, and this is too thin, and this one pills, and anyway. But it's good because I got T here, who's the test dummy for everything, so she gets to wear and give me feedback, and we yeah. just keep creating. And um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to keep bringing uh, more undefeated merch out. Obviously, we love supporting IFBB as well, and you know, really, I think the idea behind the whole season A or seasonal wear with undefeated and IFBB was. Been able to give the athletes again something memorable to take home, something that's really, you know, uh, almost like a little um, piece Keep of time. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, like you know, you go to a concert, you want to get a concert T-shirt. Get a shirt. Yeah, get a shirt. And I think that. That when I started competing back in 2013, 2014, they almost, I think they had those as well back then. Like they would actually give out like you know shirts for the season or at least um, for the year as well. So we wanted to bring that back, and obviously we try and change up every season, so it's a little bit different in design. Um, but I think, yeah, the feedback we get is really cool because the feedback is um, like, you know, people get one shirt, then they go online and they, they get another shirt, and then they obviously get more and more. So 
because they enjoy the quality. So when we put our heart into something, it um it works. It's it's really, really cool. Yeah, for sure. Is there any um any any people you want to shout out as far as sponsors go for you guys and people you want to sort of just mention? Always Massination. Always Massination. They're family to us and have supported us from day dot, both clothing and supplementation. Yeah. So they're um yeah. They, we owe them a lot. We watched Muscle Nation grow from, you know, obviously uh, Nathan's yeah. grandma's house. Nathan's to... garage, <laughs> grandma's garage to the biggest warehouse they've got now, the the, the one they just built. It's just yeah, huge. Yeah. We, we actually saw Nick um Vitus, who's chocolate guy, um yeah. today down at, at the gym and He's now done a obviously a collaboration with Muscle Nation, and he says it's been great working with them, and they've actually helped him to realize because I think Chocolate, his brand, was in with Woolworths, and they did some creations with some really cool, like obviously yummy fucking cookies and whatever he does, cheesecakes. Um, <laughs> but I think that he felt for a long time he was saying that like you know obviously he needed Woolworths and like you know it was sort of like a one way street, whereas Muscle Nation and the the guys uh, and girls behind the brand really opened his eyes up to the fact that, now, hang on a second, like, you know, I provide value as well and, and sort of yeah. a, enabled him to take his business to a new level, um, which I think is great when you see, like, you know, obviously Aussie companies are getting together and supporting each other and, and collaborating and, and moving forward. You know, it's um, yeah, it's really, really cool to see. Yeah, Absolutely. sure. It's fantastic. When are we, when are, when are we going to see uh, Emily or a King Body's line with Muscle Nation? It's coming. It's actually coming. It's coming. Yeah. Very yeah. Soon. It's in the works. It's in the works. Yeah. Very exciting. Again, I love that as well. The fact that you know you can come on and put your name to something and be involved in that creative process as well. Yeah, so cool. Um, because again, like you know, gym clothes have become part of what we do. We spend so much time and in, uh, in gym clothes. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be looking forward to it. And um we definitely support the range when it comes out. Um, but look, guys, we're about to hit two hours, so it has been a long podcast, but um, I've thoroughly enjoyed having you guys on. Um, thank you so much, M. Best of luck in two days' thank time. Friends and, and then backing up again two weeks later at Nationals. Um, I definitely think that, you know, you're obviously, um, you know, really going to inspire and motivate a lot of people uh, with your journey from WFF now to into wellness, and you'll be def definitely be a great representative for our sport across the globe so i'm excited to see you keep leveling up and uh we'll always be supporting from the uh from the stands as well that i'll see you backstage maddie well um thank you for being on uh looking forward to the off season brother watching you grow uh reach new levels hopefully you get that rehab sorted out with the the um the nerve the neck um yeah. thanks for your on. help mate you and it's it's it sucks that you went through it before me but it was also comforting to have you and Dean be like, you know what, you'll get through this. and Yeah, you can get through it. I mean, there's always a way around it. So we just got to work a bit smarter and, and choose our you know approach with some things. But, I mean, there's definitely life beyond um, what, what's, what you're going through right now as well. But, um, yeah, as always, mate, we, we love to um, to watch your progress. We love to watch your guys online, you know, your your team, um, including, you know, obviously the family and, and the coaches um, because you definitely inspire a lot of the um, – yeah, you got a great presence across the Aussie fitness industry, and uh, we definitely appreciate seeing you guys more and more on our screens. Yeah. Um, thank you. We'll Thanks, Mike. You. Appreciate it. Time. We'll see you in tea tomorrow, more than Done. likely, or it definitely, we'll catch if up. Not, definitely Sunday. Yeah. Always, guys. Well, just a quick mention: if you do like the content, please subscribe. Um, obviously, check out these guys online. Subscribe to the channel IFBB Procast, and we will keep bringing you more um, up to date with Australian bodybuilding and across the globe as well. Till next time, guys. Uh, stay jacked. <laughs> yeah, I love it. See you, bro.